Good evening, everybody. Tonight we're going to be debating, is the solar system fake? And to get us started off, start us off, sorry, Wits It Gets It is here, and uh, Wits It, the floor is all yours. Good evening, everybody. Tonight we're going to be debating, um, is How long is it supposed to be? I forgot to ask. Uh, this here, uh, well, we can the the debate itself. Uh, we'll probably try to ra roll it out like around two hours if we can. Uh, it's usually what we aim for. If it goes a little longer, that's fine. But uh, I was getting a little feedback there, but I think it stopped. I'm not sure who it was, but uh, we're good to go. So, uh, what's it? Uh, ten minutes on the okay. clock, and it's all yours. Cool. Ten minutes. All right. I'm gonna actually try to keep up with it. All right. So I'm gonna share my screen real fast. All right, <clears throat> so we're talking about is the solar system fake? Basically, geocentrism versus heliocentrism. Uh, I didn't really have time to put a specific uh, presentation together, but I have a little something about it. I call this how Einstein's flip-flop bury the heliocentric model. I definitely can't cover all of it in 10 minutes, but we're going to go through it. So here's a quote from Einstein. It says, while I was thinking of this problem in my student years, I came to know the strange result of Michelson's experiment. That's the michelson morley experiment. Um, and he comes down to say, since then, I've come to believe that the motion of the earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment, though the earth is revolving around the sun. So <clears throat> he just straight up says, I believe the earth is moving around the sun, but I can't actually detect it with any optical experiment. So this is, of course, that test. They shot perpendicular light rays. They expected that there would be what's called a fringe shift or an interference pattern of a certain amount based on the assumed rotate or revolution speed of the Earth around the sun. And they did not see this. So what they actually said was that the apparatus contracted in the direction of motion um, with length contraction. So it just made it look like the Earth wasn't moving. It's called the uh, most famous failed experiment in history because it was a quote-unquote no result. Although if you look closely, there actually was a slight fringe shift. It was just nowhere near the amount expected. Um, so that's what he's talking about when he says, well, we can't use optical experiments, you know, optics being uh, primarily light. So then afterwards, um, or after this test, they basically had something on the table that they had to try to figure out. And this guy sums it up pretty good. Um, he says, the problem which now faced science was considerable for there seemed to be only three alternatives. Uh, the first was that the Earth was standing still, which meant scuttling the whole Copernican theory and was unthinkable. Uh, this is his Einstein, the life and times. And Copernican principle or theory is, of course, the idea that the Earth does not occupy a special or unique position. Here's Einstein again, and the reason that Einstein's important is because his theory is still the mainstream consensus to try to claim that the Earth is flying around the sun. Uh, he says here that the struggle back in the day, if it was heliocentric or geocentric, seemed, it was meaningless. Uh, either coordinate system can be used with equal justification. Now, that's his claim, because it actually cannot be equally justified, and we'll cover that tonight. But he says the sun is at rest and the Earth moves, or the sun moves and the Earth is at rest, are two... Uh, equally valid statements. It's just about which uh, coordinate system you prefer. So here he says that the motion of the earth in space cannot be made perceptible in terrestrial experiments, meaning no experiment on the earth. So optical nor terrestrial experiments and that all attempts to, to measure the orbit of the earth around the sun were negative. And that before he put the theory of relativity forward, it was difficult to even come up with the reason why that was. Um, here is Steven Weinberg, uh, well-respected physicist and he explains if we were to adopt the frame of reference like Tycho's in which the earth is at rest that's the Ty Tycho Brahe Tychonic model uh, then the distant galaxies would seem to be executing circular turns once a year oh wow the galaxy just execute a circular turn once a year that just makes way too much sense no way that's real um, and he just explains that even with relativity, uh, if you apply general relativity, the enormous motion would create forces akin to gravitation, which would act on the sun and planets and give the motions of the Tychonic theory. Um, and he explains that he brought this up in an unpublished Proposition 43 that did not make it to the Principia. Uh, he acknowledged that Tycho's theory could be true if some other force besides ordinary gravitation acts on the suns and planets. I'm going to try to, I'm covering quite a bit, but I'm just going to try to get through it. So... Anyway, this is uh, Proposition 43 that didn't make the final publication, which is interesting. And he says, in order for the Earth to be at rest in the center of the system of the sun, planets, and comets, there is required both universal gravity and another force, in addition, that acts on all bodies equally according to the quantity of matter in each of them and is equal and opposite to the accelerative gravity in which the Earth tends to the sun. And thus, celestial bodies can move around the Earth at rest as in the Tychonic system. That's Isaac Newton himself saying, in fact, yes, the Earth can be in the center 
Um, here is Einstein, uh, which is very interesting and telling quote. He says, but when I was a student, I saw that experiments of this kind had already been made, in particular by your compatriot, uh, Mickelson. He proved that one does not notice anything on the earth that it moves, but that everything takes place on earth as if the earth's in a state of rest. So we can just get get this idea out that, oh, all science has proven that the solar system's real and we're flying around it. That's absolutely patently false. Um, here's more. I'm going to have to skip through some of this. Here's relational mechanics. So there's two important things to be familiar with. There's something called kinematics and dynamics. Kinematics is geometry, basically. So the geomet geometric paths that the planets move, for example, that's called kinematics, just the actual geometry and the path that they move. Dynamics is what causes that to happen, the force that would cause them to move. Now, everyone knows that just with the term relativity, you should understand there's a kinematic equivalence, meaning if I'm standing on the road and I see a carriage go by, it's like, well, the carriage can be moving or I can be moving. That's basically the principle of relativity. And so relativity says, sure, everything looks like the Earth's in the center and not moving, but just because that's our relative position, uh, they're equally valid. So it's a kinematic equivalence. No one could ever dispute that. That's actually the only way the heliocentric model has even gotten to this point is to claim that it's kinematically equivalent as in the way the planets move and we see them, it works equally in both scenarios, but there's also a dynamic equivalent. So if anyone's interested in reading on if up on it, this is relational mechanics by Andre Assis. Um, and he breaks down all the math, all the physics using both Newtonian and Einsteinian mechanics showing that a hundred percent, you cannot claim that uh, di the dynamic equivalence does not exist. He proves that it does. Here he shows right here, this analysis shows clearly that in general relativity, kinematically equivalent situations are not dynamically equivalent. And what he actually shows here is that there's a problem with the relativistic approach. It doesn't work. Um, but I don't have enough time to explain all of that. But basically he says, uh, so if you let the Coriolis term become similar to the Lorentz magnetic force, it might be called a gravitational magnetic field generated by the rotation of the set of distant galaxies, meaning that the angular momentum of all the cosmos moving around the earth will actually keep it in place. Um, and then he goes on to say the flattened figure of the earth, of course, assuming it's a sphere, not what this is about, or Foucault's pendulum can no longer be utilized as proofs of the earth's real rotation. I've sent this to many PhD astronomers, astrophysicists. They've asked for the dynamic equivalence. None of them have come back with anything other than concession. Here is Dr. Luca Popov. We got a few minutes left. He wrote Newtonian Machian analysis of the neo tyconian model of planetary motions, where he breaks down again, the math and physics showing that there is an, another interesting remark that follows from this analysis. If one put the whole universe in accelerated motion around the earth, the pseudo potential corresponding to pseudo force will immediately be generated. The pseudo potential then causes the universe to stay in that very state of motion without any need of, for exterior forces acting upon it. So this is saying actually using the Newtonian framework, all the physics, all the dynamics is satisfied that the universe, quote unquote, would perpetually move around the earth. It would only need a primary mover. Uh, an important part here is we saw that Einstein and Newton were explaining, well, if there was an uh, equal and opposite reaction or there was an additional force, well, that's what you would have with the entire cosmos moving around the earth. You would have a centrifugal force. Right. And so one might say, oh, well, the centrifugal force would cause it to keep going in a straight line. But no, there's also a Coriolis force that's twice the magnitude. And in this scenario, it would be a real force as opposed to this pseudo fictitious force where all the inertial forces are fictitious in the fairy tale that is heliocentrism. And so it would actually be twice the magnitude, a radially inward accelerative force that would keep it in place. All the physics are satisfied. I don't have time to explain the, the actual problem with Newtonian and Einsteinian mechanics on the galactic scale, but it's obvious everyone knows this. For example, um, if you have if you look at the actual galaxy rotations, the Newtonian mechanics only yields about one tenth the value required to even satisfy the physics. Here's Einstein, actually uh, a letter to Ernst Mach, the Machian principle, basically the one long story short, uh, 200 years, it took 200 years after Newton for then Mach to come around and be like, wait, Newton didn't even consider the rest of the universe. He only considered the solar system. So therefore assume that if the sun has a bigger mass, we go around it. If you account for the entire universe, which Newton literally didn't even count for it, just assumed it was absolutely just like there, like a background, then the physics would necessitate you say that the earth could be in the center. Uh, this is Einstein writing back to him saying, yes, you're correct. And it would even actually drag the pendulum around. Um, and then this is him saying sexual relativity says there's no ether. He gets over to general relativity and fit 1915. And he's like, Oh, I was wrong. when I said there was no ether. There has to be an ether. Um, and then he says the story of ether is by no means finished. It's continued by the relativity theory. 
So I got about a minute left. So we're going to move real quickly. Some people will say, oh, well, in order for this to happen, things would have to go faster than the speed of light. That's impossible. Relativity itself says that in the presence of uh, gigantic masses, that the speed of light could actually be superseded. Einstein himself straight up says that uh, ex according to the general theory of relativity, the law of const the constancy of the velocity of light, which constitutes one of the two fundamental assumptions in the special theory of relativity and to which we have already frequently referred, cannot claim any unlimited validity. So almost no one here has ever heard that, but that's the truth. That's Einstein's own words. The speed of light is not definitive, even according to relativity. Here's a geocentric path just fitting right within a torus field. Here's the more uh, geocentric path of planets, and you see it has order and it's coherent. It fits right within a torus field. Okay, so long story short, um, there was an ether vortex measured, and there's no answer for that other than the Earth being stationary, so we can get into it. All right, well, we'll stop the screen share there, and I want to remind everybody hanging out in the live chat right now, if I sound a little grimy, it's because I'm legit talking through a 1950s microphone. I left my new one at the jam space. Uh, so Dallas, Texas, that's where we're going to be here in a few days. Uh, if you could stop the screen share there, what's it? Uh, oh, sorry. That's all right. I just have to pop the Zoom uh, open again to do that. But yeah, if you uh, want to end it on your end, that's fine. And then we'll get into the next part. But yeah, Dallas, Texas is where we're going to be uh, hanging out uh, for our live debate con four. You won't want to miss it, folks. Uh, we have our tickets linked in the description. Uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, you know, what's it's going to be there? Leo, I think, is going to be the MVP of the day. Uh, I think he's got a lot of debates going on. Matt Delahunty is going to be there. Aaron Raw, David Wood, uh, all kinds of great speakers. You won't want to miss it. But in the meantime, let us know where you're hanging out. We'd love to know where our, uh, where, where you guys are tuning in from and where you're going to be on November 4th when the debate con is happening. I'm in Nova Scotia right now. Where are you hanging out, what's it? Florida. Florida? Well, you'll be in Texas in a few days. What about you, T-Jump? Do you mind telling us where you're at? The round earth. He's on the round earth. Well, we're going to hand it over to T-Jump on that. Let us know where you're at in the live chat, and T-Jump, 10 minutes on the floor. Yeah, so the debate topic today is, is the solar system real? And the answer is yes, the solar system is real. Um, there have been numerous methodologies that have, can be used in order to verify the existence of the solar system in astronomy. There's radio astronomy, infrared astronomy, Refracting telescopes, infrared radiation, optical astronomy, high energy astronomy with X-ray astronomy, gamma ray astronomy, UV astronomy. All of these different methodologies can be used to verify and validate many of the facts in the solar system that can be used to provide consilience to get the exact same results around many fields, many countries of tens of thousands of different independent variables that can be verified all by these different methods to be the exact same thing. And the flat earth are like, nuh -uh. I don't understand math and, and science and stuff. No. But they can just cry all they want. We don't really care because science makes discoveries. Flat Earth doesn't make discoveries. Uh, so if you just want to go to Google Scholar, you can just start reading the papers. Edge of the solar system, large-scale chaos in the solar system, abundance of elements in the solar system, um, evolution of the solar system, Nubal gases in the solar system, x-rays from solar system objects. All of these are discoveries which have been made and peer-reviewed by academic sources that can be verified with novel testable predictions. That's what real science is. Flat Earth is just making stuff up. They say, nah, -uh. they use what's called post hoc rationalization, which is objectively fallacious. And the fact is that they are crank science. Crank scientists use quote mining, like as we saw earlier today, misunderstanding science, misunderstanding math. Uh, don't verify the field, don't publish peer review, don't do their own research, and don't publish or do any discoveries. If Flat Earth wants to be taken seriously, they need to make their own kind of a NASA, which makes discoveries equivalent to those made by NASA and other scientific bodies around the world. Until they do that, they are a joke. And I'll end there. All right. Well, I'll turn that preamp back up so everybody can hear me again. Uh, I'll remind everybody once again, uh, links are in the description for the tickets to the live debate con. Uh, and we also have a link to our crowdfund. You see the thermometer next to the screen there. Uh, so if you donate to the crowdfund, you can get all kinds of amazing perks like a one-on-one -on -one with James at the maximum level. Uh, you know, if you want to tell him how, how you can't stand hearing me talking in this old microphone, you'd like to see me stop, you know, you can let him know. Uh, second tier down, you can uh, get a signed picture of your favorite speaker. Uh, so definitely check out those links in the description. I'm going to pull out here, guys. We're going to kick it into an open discussion. Uh, we'll put it over to you, Witsit, to uh, respond to what you just heard there.
Uh, I mean, there's not much to respond to. That's just a bunch of ad homs and poisoning the well fallacies <laughs> and uh, oh, and red red herring because we're not talking about flat earth. We were talking about is the solar system real, which is the idea that the earth revolves around the sun with a bunch of planets in an ever expanding universe. That's the debate, not about I think flat earthers are stupid. You said something about no peer reviewed. I just showed you published peer reviewed papers showing the dynamic equivalence. And you said, no, I don't like math and physics and stuff. Okay, well, let's see if you can rebut the math and physics then. So what, what's wrong with the Newtonian, uh, neo-Tychonian analysis of the dynamic equivalence? Or do you not know what that is that we can discuss? Absolutely none of them support flat earth or reject the solar system. So that's the problem. Every single academic source agrees there is a solar system. That's the problem. So I don't, I don't need to discuss any of it. I don't need to know any of the math because every single paper academically published supports the solar system. So if you're quoting a paper that's academically published, it agrees with the solar system. I don't really want to hear your misinterpretations and your misunderstandings of math. It's not really worth my time. I don't really care. What I want to see is I want you to build an institute like NASA, make discoveries under the flat earth, no solar system model, publish your papers in peer review so other people can check them like NASA does. Till then, I really don't care what you don't understand. Yeah, I know. I get, I get you're projecting your own intellectual aptitude. You're going to get really uncomfortable. That's what's going to happen. But it's all good. We can. I'm going to keep it cool while you're clearly about to get very uncomfortable. Okay, so that's a published paper about the Newtonian neo-Tychonian analysis of the dynamic equivalence of a geocentric model and a heliocentric model. I think it's very obvious that you don't know what that means. It's okay. But if you just respond with more ad homs, it isn't going to change anything. It is a peer-reviewed paper saying that if the earth is stationary and in the center and everything moved around it, that you can use both Einsteinian and Newtonian mechanics to show that it's perfectly valid. And here's the real kicker. The geocentric model is more valid. So if you want to talk about the actual subject, there's no way for like two straight hours you can just add on me, right? I mean, you got to do better than that. So like, do you, do you know any of this? Can, how about this? Let's, let's do it like this. Can you give me one piece of exclusive evidence that the earth is moving around the sun? See, this is the example of the post hoc rationalization I mentioned earlier. All pieces of evidence can be explained by infinitely many hypotheses. You can make up fat pixie leprechauns made the world five seconds ago and put delusions in us and that would explain everything it doesn't make a difference if you can explain the past day what matters is novel predictions flat earthers have zero science has a million science wins i don't really care about your non-published non-peer-reviewed paper that is fake it's not interesting to me at all all I right so what... can i share my screen since he he's lied three times now so we're gonna what? thoroughly just have to sure, sure go for it. you can share okay. go ahead so now we're gonna show the paper that's fake the paper's yep. fake and it's not peer reviewed. Just remember that's, yep. that was his response. I'll yeah. give you a second there to get your screen share. Yeah. Up. yeah, let me find it. Excellent. I mean, I don't know what. Can you not just admit maybe you haven't read the paper? You know, like I'm why? Pretty sure I debated the guy who wrote it actually on really? my Luca channel. Really, Luca Popov? You you debated a, a pretty PhD sure astrophysicist? Pretty sure. That's crazy. You debated the PhD. Well, do you have the paper Luca yet? Popov. Is he gonna pull up the paper? Wait, wait. Can you admit you don't know anything about the paper? <laughs> Are you going to pull it up or not? Yeah, like I've I read a number of these fake published papers about geocentrism from a number of people on my channel, fake. and they're all fake. So please pull it up. Okay, this is hilarious. Yeah, let's I bring mean, up the paper pretty... and discuss the paper. I will. I, I, think I, I have be to fun. look up the paper. Yeah, I have to look. It's up all the good. Paper. Take your time. <laughs> I keep getting the screen uh, switched over there. Ooh, I better get the ticker back on. Uh, but once again, uh, everybody, hit the like, hit the sub, and we're going to carry on here once. Uh, once okay, so so just to show there. the name of the paper real fast, because I have to look through my PDFs. We'll show the name again because everyone's got Google. A link. You know. Conveniently, it is 2023. Everyone's got Google. I don't know why it's not showing this screen. Share screen. Here it is. Okay. okay. So Dr. Luca Popov, Newtonian mocking analysis of the Neo-Tychonian model of planetary motions. Just to make sure everyone's clear. Your current rebuttal is this paper is fake. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then let's go to the next one. The next one here. This is an entire book. <laughs> okay. Relational Mecha Mechanics books by Andre Assis. Published is this, papers. Is this also fake? Yeah. So the fake books aren't published papers. So anybody can publish a book. Uh, you know, it's not just anybody, it's a professor in physics. 
Yeah, crazy people publish books all the time. It's it. That's not an accomplishment. Where is so, my you, published paper? I wanted a published paper in an academic there it is. journal. There it is. So, and we'll actually find the actual PDF. And what's so funny is I actually talked to you. You said you debated this guy. Just you're, I, you're just making stuff up. But I actually was I've debated a number of physicists who claim to be flat earthers who publish papers. So we're not talking about flat that earth. Was, that was the argument. Yeah, I know you desperately want to poison the well. No, yeah, geocentrism, flat earth, same thing. Doesn't make a difference. They're, they're both literally cranks. not the same thing. They are, they are the same. They're just cranks who don't understand science. That's all it is. But you, do you know what dynamic equivalence means? Dynamic means uh, variable system and equivalence means that there's some equal system between no, no. those in, two things. That's what it in means. In terms of heliocentric and do, geocentric. Do you, have, do you have any discoveries for me? Dude, dude there's a kinematic and dynamic equivalence. Do you have any discoveries? I, I want to discover. You're, 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 you may rage quit. This is going to get bad. Wait, no, no, don't, no, don't stop the screen share. I'm still looking up. I still I haven't found any, I haven't found this paper in any academic journal yet. Dude. And like, I, I think it's crazy that you're this desperate, but, um, so what I want to know though, I found papers saying this guy is a crank. This is a published paper <laughs> in Cornell university saying he's a crank uh, that I found in so, self-contradiction. So, you know, do you know, do you know what the genetic fallacy is? Right, hold on space. a second there, Woodsit. Let's let him speak for a little right, bit. Wait, wait, so, hey, 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 can you help me out? Is he, this guy debating what, right now what, or am I what, tripping or is he just insulting the whole time? Maybe you can help me out. Well, I, I, he has had a lot less time to speak as of right now. So I'm going to let him have the floor uh, where he had his thoughts. So over to you, T-Jump. So this is a paper that shows he's a crank. Luca Popov has attempted to advance making physics by maintaining that the heliocentric system must be replaced by Tycho Bream's geocentric system. We show that while geocentrism relies on max contention that accelerates relative, this contention is unstable because blah, 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 blah. This is just shows he's a crank. So yeah, he's a crank. Um, do you have any actual discoveries for me? Yeah, so he's got nothing. And and I'm not going to lie, like this is maybe- In self-contradiction, Mechian geocentrism Where is the mod absolute now? absolute space by Herbert Harmon, actual published wow. peer-reviewed Cornell University. The only mod one way. I guess T-Jump has all the juice or something. Well, no, I asked, I have asked multiple times. Do you have any discoveries Was I, for I, me? Can you, can you just, what? you look really ridiculous. You're interrupting and ad homing the whole- Is that a no? Time. Well, let's, let's let him respond to that point there and we'll try to carry on from there. And it, w once again, if uh, you can for our audience, uh, what's it uh, tied into uh, how this shows that uh, the solar system is fake, uh, just to remind our audience right, uh, how we're trying. tying all this together, okay? Yeah. And you can in, in, in the screen share now. So I show he's again, a, right? It's in the you screen can, share if the, you don't mind. <laughs> this is that. this is bad. This better change, bro, because I, it's not worth my time to come here and do this to be interrupted and insulted the whole time. The student clearly he's uncomfortable. He knows nothing about. Can this. you get on with the point? Because I know you don't know how to debate, but if you could get on with the point, that'd be great. Okay. Let's. So do you have any discovery? All right, just one second don't. there, T. John. I don't want to put you on mute, but uh, I'll have to let him respond just right quick, and then we'll pass it back to you. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh, back to you, what's it? Okay. So all he's had so far is poisoning the well, ad homs, red herrings, and then a genetic fallacy. So when we're talking about this published paper, he claimed there's none that exist and that, that it was fake. Now I've shown the whole room what it is. I now have the actual PDF pulled up as well. It's a real paper by a real physicist, okay? And it has all the math and physics in it. So a genetic fallacy is where you discredit the information or argument based on the source of the information. It's very remedial. It's a very remedial fallacy. If you want to actually dispute the physics or math, we could happily do that. But I think that this is a tactic because you don't know them. The point is that if the earth is in the center of the cosmos and everything was moving around it, there is a dynamic equivalence. Do you know what that means? So which is, again, just showing he's ignorant of all of the topics, all of the field. He's saying, oh, hey, look, a crank published a paper. Therefore, it's correct. That's not how science works. So he doesn't know that. But again, the thing I asked for is where are your discoveries? Uh, my discoveries. NASA Perseverance rover landed on Mars in February, exploring the crater and has made significant discoveries, including identifying the presence of ancient river deltas and collecting rock samples and re will return them to Earth. This is a discovery. Where are your discoveries, Flurf? Okay. Yeah. And like, I can't believe you guys allow this, but anyway, um, so we're not talking about flat earth. I know that this is, you're desperately trying I asked to, a question. You, can you stop interrupting me? No, I asked a question. I want an answer to my question. Where are your discoveries? Okay. Don't interrupt me. Be a big boy. No. 
right, if we if we do need to what go what is going into... on dude because <laughs> i will do... actually leave i'm right. i'm this dude doesn't have juice over me where i'm like so beneath him i can't speak well i was gonna say if we do need to move you into are. like a one minute back See? and forth <laughs> if we need to move into a one minute back and forth if you guys you guys are already well there's no back and forth back. no no I, i'm not interested in, in hearing your words right now what i want is an answer to my question where are your discoveries i don't want to hear your people here that your... like this guy Okay, where are your discoveries? You have to answer the question. If you don't, I interrupt you. That's how it works. Where are your discoveries? But you ignored five questions I asked. So you don't have any discoveries. And if I, I were just to listed pretend, one, why are you interrupting me again? Because you lied. So I listed one. Perseverance Rover discovered Bro, uh, significant what? discoveries, including Dude. identifying the perseverance of ancient river deltas and collecting rock samples. There you go. There is one discovery. So you lied. There's a discovery. Where are your discoveries? I promise you, and I'm saying this so James can see it, if the rest of this debate is this dude condescendingly interrupting me every time I speak, I will not come back on Modern Day Debate. That's a promise. It would be better for it. Okay. What are your discoveries? Just so you know, just so you know, I, I promise because it's Answer not the question. I'm trying to. Well, yeah, okay. I was just saying, let's not I'm let literally the waiting question. for you to answer the question. Without, without, yeah, without like hyperanalyzing, let's just see if we can answer the question and carry on from there, guys. You're actually advocating what he's doing. That's what, that's pissing me off. I'm going to leave. So, any day, any day. Okay, You've had five I, minutes. Bro, you said my discoveries. Where are your discoveries? Yes. First of all, don't interrupt me. First of all, you don't have any discoveries. I literally just risked. All listed right, just one I second can't. there, TGM. We'll just it have to let him respond. So I quit. So laughably immature. Everything that you listed isn't exclusive to heliocentrism anyway. So if I pretended, oh, you have all those discoveries. Or, oh, perseverance on Mars. Oh, there's a rover on Mars. Everything you named isn't exclusive to heliocentrism anyway. Okay, so now that we debunked that, here are my discoveries. The fact that in 1933, Fritz Wicke saw that the actual relativistic prediction of the galaxy clusters needing 99% more mass than it was actually predicted showed that relativity cannot explain why the galaxies don't escape the galaxy clusters. Edwin, Hubble in, the 20s, Edwin Hubble's in the 20s showed that actually that the, the Earth seems to be in the center even according to distant galaxies. Not a discovery. They to update the model. There's two discoveries that completely... No, neither of those are discoveries. So, so the first thing, again, you just don't understand the philosophy of science. Saying that that something can't explain something else isn't a discovery. That's not how discoveries work. Secondly, your first thing you said, again, that's post hoc rationalization. You need to Google that. I know you don't know philosophy. You don't know science. You don't know math. You don't know anything. But post hoc rationalization is when you say, I can explain the data with something else. So every time you say, oh, that data isn't exclusive to your model, that's just you being dumb because that's not how evidence works. Everybody who knows basic, basic science and basic, basic, like kindergarten level philosophy, know that you can explain multiple data sets with any different number, infinitely many possible alternatives. That doesn't make it not evidence with it. That just means you're dumb. So yes, that is okay. evidence that we've sent rovers to Mars. We have made discoveries. That is not evidence of the flat earth or the, your silly model. And nothing you listed was actually discovery. What you said is it can't be explained by it. That's just post hoc rationalization. What are your discoveries? Because I have some, I'm gonna list another one for you. Phosphine in Venus. In September 2020, scientists detected traces of phosphine in Venus's atmosphere, a potential indicator of biological activity. Discovery by us, not by you. Where are your discoveries? This is the most disrespect I think I've ever been via platform. Don't interrupt me. I know you have impulse control issues. Okay, so I did give specific discoveries, okay? In 1933, it was discovered by Fritz Zwicky that when he observed the galaxy clusters, that it only had 1% of the mass predicted by relativity to prevent the galaxies from escaping the cluster. That's when they then had to ad hoc come up with the idea of dark matter saying there was 99% of undetectable, undefined matter there that we just can't explain or actually detect. That's called a discovery. Do you understand, T-Jump? No, that's not a discovery. That's saying there's something we can't explain yet. That's called an argument from ignorance. So saying, here's a model. This model doesn't explain this fact. That isn't evidence of hypothesis B. That's not how evidence works. Again, this is, you don't understand basic philosophy. You don't understand basic fallacies because you're a flurf. And so it's typical. Simply saying this can't be explained by X is not evidence of Y. It's called 
basic argument from ignorance fallacy. So that's not a discovery. You, again, don't know what a discovery is. I'll, I'll give you an, another example. Water on the moon, ongoing research and missions such as NASA's Lunar Re Reconnaissance Orbiter have provided evidence of water ice on the moon's surface. That's a discovery. A discovery. Boom. Fact about the universe. Discovered. Not something odd, but this model can't explain blah, blah, blah. No, it's discovery about the solar system. By it not being... Just, you're I, literally lost. Are right, you guys you're are taking about lost. 45 seconds each, so I'm going to put on a 45-second timer each, and we're going to bounce it. So over to you, what's it? Okay. So it was objectively discovered, meaning it was the first time it had ever been observed. It was discovered. It was an astronomical discovery that the galaxy clusters, they observed it in astronomy and discovered that the galaxy cluster only had 1% of the mass it was supposed to have. It was discovered. The amount of mass in the galaxy cluster was a discovery, just like Edwin Hubble discovered. No one knew this prior to Edwin Hubble finding it. That's why it's a discovery that the distant galaxies moved in relation to the Earth, which is why why he then had to propose a new ad hoc explanation. Do you understand that those are discoveries or are you just going to add <sighs> <hoc? sighs> If you lift up a rock and find a worm, that's a discovery. I mean, that's phenomenal. But the topic of the debate is, is the solar system real? So when I ask for discoveries, I know this tiny brain doesn't understand this. You need discoveries that indicate the FLIRF model, which I'm including in the helio, the geocentric model, the FLIRF model. So it's just the FLIRF model. We're going to call it all the FLIRF model. You have to give discoveries that that model predicts or entails or indicates that model. You haven't done this. Like all of the predictions about dark energy and the extra gravitational force of solar systems. If a solar system is real, if a galaxy is real, that indicates the solar system is real. This is not, this is not debatable. So you need to give a discovery that contradicts the solar system, the heliocentric model, and you're giving those that agree with it. Okay. And this is, and obviously I hope the uh, audience can see that this is called sophistry, the intention to mislead the audience with fallacious arguments, because he doesn't know about any of this. So those discoveries were specifically refutations of the heliocentric model. I'll give some more though, which is that they've now had to update that the accelerative expansion model, which actually comes from the Edwin Hubble discovery of the fact that the distant galaxies moved in relation to the earth in a central position, which was specifically not predicted by the heliocentric model. They proposed the idea of dark energy to now explain that space is spanning superluminal speeds over four times the speed of light, and they don't know what dark energy is to this day. A, he a geocentric model has no problem. It doesn't have accelerative expansion, and everything moves in relation to the Earth because the Earth is in the center. All astronomical observations ever show the Earth in the center. So everything Witten said is just painfully stupid. Dark energy exists whether we're in the center or not. So complaining about dark energy just shows he doesn't understand his own model. Because guess what? Everything's expanding out in every direction, whether we're the center or whether the sun is the center. So literally, dark matter and dark energy tell you nothing about whether or not the sun or the earth is at the center of the sun. It's completely irrelevant. Both data sets for extra gravity in other galaxies and expansion of the universe are there, whether we're the center or not. He's just saying things that he doesn't like about real science and complaining about it and thinking that, well, he disagrees with it, therefore it works for his model. No, you need to provide evidence of something that shows the world, Earth is the center and not the sun is the center. That's 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 your problem. And we you don't have that. We have sent sh satellites that go around the sun, land on planets, get data, and send the data back. That's a discovery based on the heliocentric model. You have nothing. Okay. And I guess this is going to, the whole debate is just going to be him baselessly asserting victory and avoiding the specificity of the actual physics I'm bringing up because he doesn't understand it, but we'll let the audience decide. So again, even if I granted you that the probes went around the sun and people landed on Mars and all this stuff, according to relativity, you can't tell if it's you or the earth that's moving. So even with the inertial forces in your model, they would be fictitious. In a geocentric model, they would be actual forces, inertial forces. There would be a kinematic and dynamic equivalence. So none of that would even be exclusive to the heliocentric model. Secondly, when we specifically tried to measure the motion of the earth, it was always a negative result. There's not one piece of evidence, and I'm asking again, can you give one piece of exclusive evidence that the earth moves around the sun gravity there you go 
How about let's go with another one? Um, Osiris Rex mission, October 2020. NASA's Osiris Rex spacecraft successfully collected a sample from the near Earth asteroid Bennu. This is based on all of the equations that demonstrate the heliocentric model that prove gravity goes inwards towards objects with greater mass. Um, and this has been a discovery that's been proven. So there you go. Done. And again, you haven't given any examples of anything that indicates geocentrism. Nothing. You keep saying, hey, here's facts about other solar systems, about relativity, which doesn't say anything about heliocentrism. It's just, hey, relativity can't tell the difference. Great. That isn't evidence of your model. Again, that's an argument from ignorance, um, which it doesn't understand basic philosophy. And they say, ah, but it can be explained by multiple, multiple hypotheses. Post-hoc rationalization. This was covered by basic philosophy 101 which it needs basic education. This is funny. Like, all you have is ad hums. Um, so the evidence is all astronomical observations ever show that Earth's in the center. The current heliocentric model literally says, yes, it looks like we're in the center and that all astronomical observations will look like we're in the center because the universe is accelerating and expanding in all directions. And it uses the analogy of like an ant on a balloon that's blowing up. And since the balloon's so much bigger than the ant, as it looks around, it thinks it's in the center, but it's actually not in the center. It's just expanding in all directions or a raisin in a loaf of bread in the oven, which is the infamous example that Hubble gave to explain the distant galaxy showing us in the center. When you say I have no evidence here, it's in the center. No, literally all astronomical observations in the history of astronomy show the Earth in the center. Your model claims it's just an illusion. That's a fact. That's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If you turn your head to the left and the right, guess what? You're going to appear in the center because you can only see the same amount of distance in every direction. So it looks like you're in the center. Is that evidence you're actually in the center of the universe? Because when you look left, you see 100 feet. When you look right, you see 100 feet. Are you in the center, Ritsit? No, that's just dumb. It's dumb to think that because when you look in every direction and we have a certain maximum distance, we can get information from light coming from different directions that therefore we're in the center because as far as we can see in every direction, it's the same distance in every direction because that's how eyes work. It's it. Good job. Again, you need to provide evidence and discoveries geocentrism and you haven't. I'll give another one for heliocentrism. Um, in Clidia's ocean, in the Cassini spacecraft, before its missions end in 2017, found evidence of a global subsurface ocean beneath the icy shell of Saturn's moon in Clidius, with plumes of water vapor erupting from its surface. Heliocentric discovery that debunks flat Earth and geocentrism. This is so funny. This is awesome, actually. Now that I think about it, this is going to be recorded forever. Um, so he said gravity proves heliocentrism. I just showed that there's a dynamic equivalence using both Newtonian and Einsteinian mechanics. All this is apparently something he's not understanding, but that is what gravity is. So there's Newtonian and Einsteinian gravity. There's a dynamic equivalence of both Newtonian and Einsteinian. And I've also explained to him that using either one of those, if all these claimed missions, which I don't believe in them, and you're just appealing to the idea that it happened, even if it did, it isn't exclusive to a heliocentric model. He skated past it and he just keeps reading off like Wikipedia names of missions. That's literally all he has. And third, here's a huge piece of evidence. Cosmic microwave background showed that there's actually an anisotropic distribution, an inhomogeneous anisotropic distribution of the background energy that intersects on the Earth. It's, it's coined the axis of evil. And it's a non-local 23.4 degree tilted anisotropic distribution that intersected on the earth. And to this day in 2023, there is not one single explanation of how it could possibly exist other than the data must be wrong. Actually, there's like a dozen of them. Just Google the Wikipedia. There's a number of explanations on that. None of it is spectacular. None of it is indicative that the world is the center of anything. Not at all. Just like how in a galaxy, notice it's a disc shape. There's a center of it because gravity spreads out in a disc shape just because of how things hit one another. So the fact that we're on the disc in a galactic universal sense in the same way we're on the disc in the galaxy sense, again, not surprising at all, fully explained, not an issue. This is why no one takes flat earth and geocentrism seriously. It's a joke. Um, I'll give another, and again, which it keeps confusing the, the post hoc rationalization fallacy of saying, ah, but it can be explained by both data sets. Again, that's just which it doesn't understand philosophy or science. So we can throw with its argument in the garbage because it's what it is. It's garbage. It's crank garbage because they don't understand how post hoc rationalization works. I'll give another discovery. 
given by actual science of heliocentrism. Kuiper Belt objects, New Horizon spacecraft having flown by Pluto in 2015 is now exploring other Kuiper Belt objects, shedding light on nature of these distant bodies. There you go. That's a discovery. Heliocentrism wins. What is what is Witz's discovery? Ah, uh, God, no. -uh. I can't. I can't understand stuff. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just more projection of his own intellectual ineptitude. But again, there's a dynamic equivalence and a kinematic equivalence according to your own model with either Einstein or Newtonian, whichever one you pick. Of course, now people are proposing modified Newtonian dynamics because relativity doesn't work because dark matter halos have shown that dark matter cannot exist because there is actually no viscosity or resistance whenever the galaxies collide. All that's over your head. Doesn't matter. The point is that all of these missions, which I don't believe in, nor do I have to, nor is it legitimate intellectual evidence in a debate, because it can't be independently verified. If I were to pretend they were all real, objectively, they are not exclusive evidence of heliocentrism because relativity says there is a kinematic and dynamic equivalence. You wouldn't know if the Earth is moving around the sun or the sun is moving from the Earth as you went out into the solar system. None of those missions would be evidence of anything. He also just claimed there were responses to the cosmic oh, microwave background, but there's not. There's anisotropic distribution called the axis of evil that is centered on the Earth, and there is objectively no explanation from a heliocentric position. Let's see if he can actually respond with specificity. Project Nihilist uh, put a very prescient comment in the in the chat. First law of flurf, all their sources disprove their claim. Phenomenal. Absolutely true. So uh, again, I he just needs go he needs to Google what the problem of determination is because he doesn't understand that him saying, ah, but it can be explained by multiple data sets is called making shit up. That's, that's all it is, making shit up. Not evidence. We don't care if you can make up fancy farting leprechauns like the geocentric model to explain data. Anybody can make shit up. There's gods that do that. Um, it's not evidence. So again, real evidence. Um, solar probe Parker, the Parker solar probe launched by NASA in 2018 has been studying the sun's outermost atmosphere and solar wind providing crucial data about the star's behavior. Discovery, heliocentrism, you're done. Gravity is working just fine going towards the sun, which means we're going around the sun and simply saying, but I can explain it with my magic farting leprechaun geocentrism. Well, we don't really care. What are your discoveries? Oh my God. I gotta say, I'm reading the chat too. And it's great. There are people that are actually pretending you're winning <laughs> and you like, you, you, you don't even understand what I'm saying to you. So yeah, there's a Newtonian Machian analysis that's published. It explains all the math and physics as well as relational mechanics. And you can apply Newtonian or Einstein and gravity to show that in fact, the earth being in the center is equally valid. But the problem is that if there's a kinematic and, and watch, he will never respond with this. He's going to list off another mission, which I've already explained. that is isn't exclusive to heliocentrism. He's going to ad hom me some more. That's all he has is sophistry. He's a, he's a textbook sophist. Watch, he will never answer this. Do you question. have any evidence? Watch this. There, if admittedly, from your own paradigm with the top levels of physics, Stephen Hawking, Albert Einstein, every top level physics you can name, you, you don't understand it, right? If there's a kinematic and dynamic equivalence in validity of a geocentric and heliocentric model, but the geocentric model does not have the dark matter and dark energy problem, wouldn't that mean that the geocentric model is more viable? You'll never answer it. I could ask it for 30 next oh. turns in a row. Well, it's because you don't understand the question. So the equivalence you're saying is that both the heliocentric and geocentric model can explain the data. That's the equivalence you're arguing for. The The dynamic stuff is just you making crap up. It doesn't apply to anything. You actually need a noun to say this is dynamic and equivalent. You can't just say dynamic equivalence. That's not a thing. There is no such thing as dynamic equivalence because there's no noun there to say what is equivalent. You need to say like the mass is equivalent or the, the momentum is equivalent. You know, you're noun there. You don't understand what you're talking about. Um, secondly, the geocentric model does have the dark matter and dark energy problems because those problems have nothing to do with the orientation of whether we go around the earth or sun. It's completely irrelevant. Dark matter is the fact that there's more gravity in a galaxy that isn't the solar system that's very very far away from it doesn't make a difference if the if it's the geocentric or, or the heliocentric model the mass in there is more than it should be there's no difference Ge heliocentric geocentric it makes no difference same with dark energy no difference so which is bringing up problems of science that he doesn't understand didn't actually explain he failed to explain how these indicate the geocentric model. He, he didn't explain this at all. He just says problems in science. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And the reason these are like kind of nuanced, higher level subjects that T-Jump doesn't understand the first thing about. So it's kind of difficult, but it's it, to really go into the depth. But when I'm talking about Fritz Wiki 1933, it, it was dark matter. You can look it up. It was discovered that relativity was 
off by uh, 99% with this prediction. Geocentrism doesn't have that problem because there is an ether, right? And if you look at Michelson Morley, it, the only reason ether is thrown out is because, well, if the earth is orbiting, there can't be an ether. Well, the earth isn't orbiting. There's no evidence for that ever. The default position is that we're in the center. That's what all empirical evidence shows. Occam razor necessitates we say that. So to prove that it's the other, you would have to actually provide evidence. Anyway, so the ether gives a substantive quality. Therefore, you don't need dark matter. Also, the earth being in the center, you don't need uh, an accelerative expansion. And that is called the Hubble constant, okay? Because Hubble discovered that the, supposedly the universe was expanding. It was the only way to explain why it looked like the Earth was in the center of the universe, no matter where you looked. So it said it was expanding. That's Hubble constant. Then you have cosmological constant, which is the energy required to make it expand at that rate, which is now over four times. Okay. okay which geocentrism let's, doesn't, let's geocentrism doesn't need the dark energy because there doesn't need to be an accelerative uh, expansion. Okay. Let's break this down for, for the, this childlike logic. The Hubble constant, what we're measuring is the change in the light frequency as it gets farther away, right? It redshifts. It gets farther away. Farther away it is, the more it redshifts, right? Uh, that's what your model claims, yeah. Right. And that and that data is the same, regardless of whether we're in the geocentric or the heliocentric model. Wherever we look, it's more redshifted the farther away it is, right? Nope. What? No. How? Because there are certain observations that are more local that have more redshift, like supernovas. Clearly, but that's not the question. The question Pretty is, clearly. do the farther away we look, is it more redshift? It's saying there's no. a closer thing that's redshifted. I, I didn't care. That wasn't the question. The question is, is does the farther away we look, things Typically, always yes. get more redshifted Typically, the farther yeah. away? Yes. And that's the same on geocentrism and heliocentrism. Okay. It's still the same, right? Well, different explanations, right? So light attenuation causes redshift no, and electromagnetic care. retardation. That's, that's that's not the point. No, Both have the same wait, problem. Wait, wait. That's the dark energy problem. Both have the same problem. Whether you call it something different doesn't make a difference. Both have the same problem. Um, you said you explain it in a different way. That's fine. You can make up some farty fairy dust to make it up, but that means yours is worse than the ones that are based in real science. Dark energy makes novel predictions based on things why we explain it as something like the expanding of space-time. Your magic fairy dust from geocentrism does not. The ether, magic fairy dust, does not explain anything. It doesn't actually mean anything to say there's an ether there. That doesn't solve the dark matter problem. It doesn't tell us anything about the dark matter problem. You're just saying there is space goo. Space goo! That's phenomenal, but that doesn't solve the problem. You still have the problem, and you still have to make something up to solve it, and the thing you're making up has no basis in reality. Therefore, yours is worse. Yeah, it's funny. What do you call it? Like magic fairy dust or whatever. Dark energy is not even defined in the top levels of physics. Oh. So to pretend that somehow that is significantly more superior than ether is laughable because actually I'll quote Robert Laughlin from Harvard University that specifically does this. He's a quantum vacuum physicist specifically. He says there is for sure something in the vacuum akin to an ether and whenever it's hit or excited strong enough that it then begins to actually manifest that in the material world as matter. So he says if you hit it sufficiently enough and I could do all kinds of things. Quantum is acknowledging quantum foam, all kinds of things that there is in fact an ether. We know there's an ether but heliocentrism can't have it. So what it does it says the quantum realm is different than everything else because you can't have an ether on the cosmological scale inside the heliocentric model. That's your own problem. But whenever he said that ether was somehow like fairy dust, it's so funny because everyone knows that dark energy is not defined and no one knows what it is. In fact, they looked at the quantum vacuum. It was off by 10 to the 120th power for the amount of energy needed in the universe. So they can't even come up with a theoretical what it could be. It doesn't make any novel predictions. No one even knows what it supposedly is. It's just needed to explain how the universe has to be expanding over four times faster than the speed of light. And electromagnetic rate retardation explains redshift on a geocentric position. You don't need expansion. So, so you think when scientists use the word dark energy, they're referring to something. Like there is a thing they are referring to that's like this new thing that they think it is. Is that, is that what you think they're referring to when they say dark energy? Yeah, a specific type of energy is what it is proposed to be. That's right. No, no. Wow. Oh my God, no, that's so easy. stupid. Dark energy is a label for an, a phenomenon that we don't know what is the cause of. That's it. That's a, dark energy. The dark there means 
We don't know what this is. It is not a new kind of energy. It is not a new kind of particle. We're not saying that. When, when scientists say there is dark energy, what they mean is there is this data that we see and we don't know what it is. So the geocentric model has the same dark energy problem. It is a thing that we see and we don't know what it is. That's it. That's all it means to say dark energy. That's all it means to say dark matter. We're not actually claiming it's this new thing that is the dark energy. It's the dark energy. Like, no, it just means unknown phenomenon, which we labeled this. That's it. So the geocentric model and the heliocentric model both have the dark energy problem because there is a phenomenon. We don't know what it is. And this is the label for it called dark energy. It's not an actual claim of what it's supposed to be made of. It's, it. it's just a label for the unknown phenomenon. All right. What about this don't you get? Before we kick it back over to Witsit, we got about 20 minutes before we go into Q&A, and uh, uh, let me know what you guys are uh, thinking. Uh, if you would prefer me to be off the mute when I'm doing the timing, because some of you guys are in the live chat saying, you're muted, Mod, but I intend to be muted, because I'm just a sophisticated timekeeper right now uh, to keep things fair. So uh, back to you, Witsit, and you can let me know in the live chat what you think. Okay. So you saw how condescending he was when he was saying, you don't even know what dark means. It just means we don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. What it actually means <laughs> is it does not interact with the electromagnetic spectrum. Dark means it isn't visible with light. It doesn't interact with the electromagnetic spectrum because we, we haven't been able to detect whatever it is. So we call it dark because it must not interact with the electromagnetic spectrum. It doesn't mean we don't know what it is. It means it doesn't interact with electromagnetic radiation. Okay. And when it comes to dark energy oh. and dark matter, and he's trying to, he's going to try to play it off like he, that's what he meant to say, right? That's what he was saying. When it comes to dark matter and dark energy, it is a specific, either something that has material characteristics and something that has energetic characteristics, but no one knows what it is. The geocentric model does not need that, and it's 96% more viable because of that. You'll never specifically rebut it. You can't. There is no rebuttal. Uh, so the level of stupid is cringe here. Like, Wits, it literally said it doesn't interact with the electromagnetic field, which is great, right? Does that tell us what it does do? No. So so here's the thing it doesn't do. Great. Does that tell us what it is? No. So so my claim was it's we don't know what it is. And he said, we don't know what it is and we don't know it doesn't do this. Okay. Does, is, that, is that a claim we do know what it is? No. It, it's a claim we don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it's made of. And so we label it dark energy. If, if it interacted with the EM spectrum, we'd know what it is. We'd have some kind of data for it. We don't have any data for it. That's the dark energy and dark matter problem. We don't know what they are. We know some things they don't do. We don't know what they do do. And so there is a data set that we don't know what it is, and we need to explain it. Guess what? Geo's interests have the same problem. They just explain it Five with seconds. magic space goo. There are explanations for dark matter, like wimps. Wimps are a potential explanation of dark matter. We don't call wimps dark matter because dark matter is a class of an unknown. Wimps are a potential explanation for the unknown. Magic ether space goo is a different potential explanation of dark matter. Both have the problem of dark matter and both have hypothetical solutions, which it just doesn't get the basic problem of what dark means in physics. All right, a little extra time, with it. The audacity for him to act like I don't know what it means when I actually had to correct it. He, he said that dark means it. We don't know what it is. That's objectively not what it means in physics. It means it's undetectable due to the lack of interaction with the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, and then he, I, I get it. You're wow. coping. I get you're coping. It's okay. Undetectable. So here's the don't reality. Know. Stop which, interrupting which, me. Synonyms. Synonyms. Here's, undetectable. Here's, don't know. Synonyms. So Those are synonyms, Wits it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, and he said, it's just a phenomenon. We don't know what it is. I was like, okay, well, no. Like, for example, with dark matter, it has to have material characteristics. Wimps is a claim that is baryonic matter. He doesn't even know what this stuff is. He's just like Googling like catchphrases and stuff. He doesn't know any of it, but it's a claim that it's super like uh, small baryonic matter 
right? That we can't really detect from these distances. Okay. That's the claim, but it's also been thoroughly debunked. I would also like to point out, and you can go to my channel and learn all about this, which it gets that I cover this on relatively speaking show, right? But there are many physicists coming out saying it's like basically split camps now. It's like, okay, relativity so bad, dark matter so bad. We had to do away with it. Modified Newtonian dynamics might be the better option because dark matter doesn't work because the dark matter halo show that there's, it actually doesn't match the predictions. My point again, though, is the geocentric model doesn't need dark matter or dark energy, which means it's 96% more viable than the heliocentric model. Again, which is just kind of just blatantly dumb here. Dark matter isn't a thing. It's not a thing. It is an unknown phenomenon, which could be explained by a number of things. Witsit explains it with magic space goo. That is dark matter. In his world, magic space goo ether is dark matter. So dark matter does exist on geocentrism. Would you disagree with it? Do you think that the geo, the problem of dark matter, the, the data we see, you solve that by saying there's magic space goo, right? No, I don't have a problem with dark matter. I don't need dark matter. You need that dark matter is a up. set of data. How do you explain the set of data? Well, no, I, it's a set of data assuming relativity is true. No, it's a set of data. There's no <laughs> assumption there. We, we, we look at galaxies. There is more mass than what would be expected. This is it. You explain that, right? You think the magic space goo holds it into place, right? You think the magic space goo holds it into place. So you have a you have an explanation of, of this data. This is crazy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. With the galaxies, I explained it, right? I explained that um, they made the observation that the galaxy should be leaving the cluster. The reason that there's not enough mass there. Well, how do you determine not enough? Well, you have to have something that's giving you a prediction that there should be this amount and there's not that amount. That something is relativity. That's why many people are proposing modified Newtonian dynamics to replace relativity to do away with the dark matter problem because assuming dark matter, even though it's undefined, it doesn't work with dark matter halos and galaxy collisions and merging. Oh, for sure. So you were wrong again. The reason dark matter comes from relativistic assumption. Now, let me say this one more thing. The earth, if the earth is in the center, when we make all our observations, we'll probably see that it looks like the earth's in the center. The heliocentric model says, oh, it's expanding. That's why it looks like that. That's why you need dark energy, but we don't. Do you not understand the concepts? Again, again, uh, so Witsit is dumb. Dark energy is a phenomenon that when we look further away, we see redshift. You see that in both. Different ways to explain it is having the same problem and explain it with different hypotheses. That's all it is. Which it just doesn't get this. I'm going to go back to actual discoveries that actually matter because what's it saying is stupid. Uh, Ganymede's magnetic field in June 2021, the Juno spacecraft orbiting Jupiter discovered that Ganymede, one of Jupiter's moons, generates a strong magnetic field, making it the only moon in the solar system known to do so. Discovery made by sending satellites around planets and stars using gravity, using general special relativity to accurately send things into space and make testable predictions and confirm them, something that flurfs have never done. We need discoveries. Nothing which it has said is a discovery. Nothing nothing which it has said is anything a flurf or a geocentrist nut has ever done to make a real discovery in the world. They're kind of like idealists. They like to think in their big chairs about big fancy words they don't understand and then hypothesize about explanations and then never do any tests to confirm it. And so until they actually build like a NASA where they can do tests in the universe and confirm it with stuff, they really have nothing but armchair making stuff up. So basically all he's resorted to, and it's really what he started with, is a bunch of fluff. I, I hope that obviously the audience, whoever's claiming I'm getting wrecked, is just super biased. I'm, I've invited you to have intellectual specificity, but frankly, it's very obvious that you don't know about this stuff, so you have to resort in this like fluff sophistry. It's whatever. But I'm trying to point out that all observations show that the Earth's in the center. The heliocentric model of 2023 agrees with that. So that's retrograde, parallax, the planetary motion of the, uh, like the orbits of the planet, all of that looks like the earth is in the center, according to your own model. Mm. They claim the reason it looks like that is because the universe is accelerating and expanding, but we have the hump Hubble tension problem, the inflation problem, the, like the, uh, horizon problem, the flatness problem. We have the dark energy and dark matter problem in your paradigm. Now in a geocentric earth, 
the reason it looks like we're in the center is because we are, and we don't have any of those problems, which means objectively it's more viable. So again, I already, I already debunked Whitson on this. Uh, he doesn't understand post hoc rationalization. He doesn't understand underdetermination. The fact that you can make up already in fairy dust explanations of other data doesn't make yours better. It just means you're making shit up. I'm ready to go to q and I'll bet you are. <laughs> I dunked on you enough for the day. I'm good. Everyone knows that you don't know anything about all this. Oh, Except I yeah, corrected closed, you multiple times. We had to have times. closing remarks, though. I'm oh, going to come off the mute right quick. I usually do them after the Q&A just because uh, sometimes we get into a lot of back and forth if we missed it throughout the open discussion. Because sometimes people ask really good questions and we can, you know, get into some of the stuff that we didn't get into during the debate. So anybody watching in the live chat right now, hit that like button. Share this out in those contentious spaces that you like to have these discussions. Uh, me and Ozian are going to be doing an after show uh, over on Matters Now, so you can uh, hang out over there. These guys are welcome to join us as well. We're going to run into our Q&A but I'm also going to do a little uh, a little extra housekeeping here and remind you once again that our tickets for DebateCon 4 are linked in the description. So if you're seeing double, it's because Witsit's going to be there and he's going to be debating Leo, uh, Phileas. Uh, who else? You're going to be debating a couple times too, aren't you, Witsit? I don't know. I don't think so. No? Okay. I, mean, I, I thought I'd seen your face a few times. Maybe it's just because we, you're a popular guy. Tentative. There was another one tentatively, but, you know, people people get scared to, de to defend atheism nowadays, so... Oh, no, someone got scared. Well, that's no fun. Well, either way, uh, if you're seeing double, that's because what's it down here is going to be debating creationism versus atheism against Leo Phileas. You're not going to want to miss it. So get your tickets in the description below if you're going to be in the Dallas area and you can make it. Uh, and let us know in the live chat if, uh, where you're at right now. We're going to be hanging out in Dallas, of course, uh, for the convention. It is all going to be streamed live for free on YouTube as well. I know shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit by just offering it to you for free, but uh, that's how we roll here at Modern Day Debate. If you can't help us out by being there for the live event, you can't purchase tickets. Uh, you see this little crowd fund I'm moving around over here? Uh, that's that's a little indicator of uh, another thing we have going on where you can donate to our crowd fund and get access to uh, perks such as a signed picture of your favorite debater. So without further ado, let's go into the Q&A and see if we can stir the pot of this discussion, everybody. All right. Run Boston Bear for four ninety nine says... Which it brings the truth. If you reject it, the programmer is strong with you. We don't live on a spinning water ball. I recommend investigating. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, the truth is most people, just, it's easier to be like, ha ha, you're dumb. Ha ha, you think you're smarter than scientists. And, you know, it's maybe the truth's not for them. I mean, you know. I encourage you to not worry about what other people think and consensus has consistently been wrong about pretty much everything, e even within quote unquote currently accepted science. So just research things yourself thoroughly because attacking other people and belittling them and pretending that you know things that you don't is not really going to do anything, even if you convince other people like you should be worried about truth for yourself. It's good for your soul. Any thoughts over there, Tom? Uh, Google the properties of quack science. If you just Google like the, the stages of quack science, um, you will take like four or five sentences out of, out of what Witsit just said, or I think half of them. Okay. Well, let's carry on there, gents. Uh, Ozian Talk says, Tom will always have enough hair for a comb over. Um, I, I don't usually read comp, uh, comments about someone's physical appearance, but uh, I, I think we're all over 30 and we all have got a good hairline going on. Like... Rocking it, fellas. Rocking it. All right. Run Boston Bear for four ninety nine. News flash. In Austin's opener, he wasn't just making stuff. Check everything he said and it'll hold water. I think they meant just making stuff up. Uh, check everything he said and it'll hold water. It may also set you free from deception. So you got a fan with Run Boston Bear? Thoughts uh, on Run Boston Bear's input there? What's it? Yeah, shout out to Run Boston, bro. I just kicked it with him at Flatoberfest in Vegas. He's super cool dude. That's my homie. He's a legend. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I will say, right, this is a, a conversation that requires some time. So for me to try to unpack it in 10 minutes or with someone that's not like really trying to be honest about the specific information in the heart of it, I mean, it's, it's more than that. But uh, do look up the stuff, look up the papers, look up the books, read the math, read the physics. Um, and I have a show called In the Field where I have astronomers, astrophysicists, different people with credentials on 
and you can maybe just glean from those conversations two or three hours. In fact, I'll take this opportunity to say I have one on the first. We're going to talk about the Ether Vortex, and this is a, a legend that's going to be on there. So yeah, just just you know, invest the time required because all good knowledge requires some time. Any thought on that, Tom? Uh, Ether Vortex or uh, conversations uh, with uh, those individuals? People have gone through the science with Witsit many times, like uh, cats. And they've shown him that he knows absolutely nothing and that all of his sources debunk himself, uh, but it's not really worth the time. All right. Well, let's carry on from there then. Uh, uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out in the live chat. And uh, if you are hanging out in the live chat and you're enjoying what you're hearing from either of our speakers, they will be linked in the description. Uh, so if they're not linked now, they will be linked post uh, the debate also in our podcast because all of these debates get uh, uploaded to a podcast form within 24 hours. Uh, so if you're watching right now and you're in the live chat, hit the like button. I see we're sitting around uh, 250 hey, Ryan, likes. Look, is there any way we can work something out where I can go downstairs? and like fill my glass and piss real fast and then do that <laughs> like if he if there are questions for him like you, it'll be like just a couple minutes austin yeah, you, you hit me yeah, in a go. soft spot you rhymed okay like oh, yeah sorry. do I it got, I got to do fly it. you right. fool fly it's all good <laughs> do the gandalf for you all right see you in a few all right so uh let's see what we got here uh for t jump uh yeah and you know why they couldn't fly on the eagles because the eagles would have wanted the ring as well there you go. All right. So that's your Lord of the Rings input. This one went from Run Boston Bear, and I might take one out of Witsit's uh, chapter here uh, and give you the floor for a second here. T jump. All the discoveries you keep listing are biased in philosophy that infinite space is real. It's not. No one has played golf on the moon. Yes, they have, but none of the discoveries I listed are contingent on infinite space. They don't care whether space is infinite or not. All they need to do is have it's contingent on the ability to launch shuttles and things across the solar system, like across the sun through gravitational trajectories in order to land where they want them to land. That's all you need for these discoveries. You don't need any infinite space stuff. All right. Ryan, do some housekeeping from your hooligan. Yeah, yeah, I, did, I, I thought I did the housekeeping. I'll remind everybody once again. Uh, tickets are linked in the description. Uh, we're going to be in Dallas and Texas. Uh, so let us know in the live chat where you're hanging out. I'm in Nova Scotia right now. We heard from both of our speakers. You can go back in the video. Uh, I, I pitched it at the very beginning. So uh, we know where everybody's at, um, but I can't remember where everybody's at. So uh, don't count on me. Uh, let's carry on with the q and I'm just going to search for another one here for you lj hey you made it this is the right time for you you're always commenting on the space debates always making space comments uh, i'm really glad to see that you're here and uh this this will hopefully keep us uh, in the zone he said brainwashed t-jump well that seems real on the money right like hmm, good good stuff there lj if the moon was physical and asteroids were real we'd have videos from earth of asteroids hitting the moon by now why don't we have one i think actually i might read that just one more time just because wits it's here uh so first to ut jump uh and then i'm gonna take my opportunity he says if the moon was physical and asteroids were real we'd have videos from earth of asteroids hitting the moon by now why don't we have one over to you uh, T -Jump. because the face of the moon that's facing the earth is in between us and so if there is an asteroid that was going to try to hit the side of the moon that was we're looking at it would have to pass the earth to do so and the earth is a bigger gravitational force and so it would hit the earth which means asteroids are more likely to hit the back of the moon or the sides not the part of the moon that's facing us it makes no sense okay yeah well, I'm well, more likely doesn't mean it should never happen but anyway we have lunar waves and uh they have no answer for lunar waves and, they, and they've been captured with some of the the nicest telescopes that exist um they claim that it must be a jet that flew by well that's crazy because we've been recording the sky for the last five hours there are no jets no planes there are lunar waves and actually we've seen that there are waves in the entire sky now in space quote unquote but uh yeah, you know, I mean, the moon is not what you think it is. And if you really think some Masons pulled their Masonic flag out on the moon in 69 and read a Bible verse and haven't been back in 50 years, then this conversation may not be for you. 
Like lunar waves, you think there are waves on the moon's surface or something? No, no, like we've actually observed and recorded the fact that there are waves that go across the moon. Yeah. So you think that you think there's waves on the moon's surface? Okay. I don't. I didn't even say the word surface. Why would I say such a word? Lunar waves are a real thing. Have you ever researched them? They are not a real thing. There, there are no. Waves but you've never researched lunar, them, but you know surface. they're not a real thing. I, That's crazy. Like just Google lunar waves. Like literally, nothing comes up. It's not a thing. Yeah, Google. Yeah, because Google doesn't hide stuff. Google's your best friend. Trust me. T. John knows. He's seven boosters deep. Well, I can I can Just find look up all crow. the other conspiracy theories. Look, we get it, bro. We get it. We get it. You're waiting for Biden. Let's be careful there, there what we no say on the air, just because we don't want to get okay. demonetized, fellas. All right, crow, and talk about those things. Crow triple seven. <laughs> so crow with two R C R R O W triple seven lunar waves. He's got them documented many times. Is that a published journal? I'm gonna go with no. Good one. It's pretty good burn, actually. Funny is I could show you some public journals that would make you regret your decisions the last three years. You wouldn't want to read those. You would just, as soon as I give you the published paper, just like earlier when I showed, no, that's a real published peer-reviewed paper, objectively. Then he says, oh, let me Google how he's a quack. So they immediately shift the goalpost to, oh, well, let me discredit that person with the genetic fallacy. So all it is is sophistry. It's always an attempt to like dismiss the info because if they actually have to talk about the information and the evidence, they stand no chance. They're uninformed. So it's a tactic. And, and I think that real truth seekers will clearly see that that's the case. And if not, I don't care. Well, that's, that's what flat flurfs usually do. They ignore the actual data that's being presented and say, ah, you're just, you're just not looking or not paying attention. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, that's all they really say. And then mischaracterize the opponent's position because that's all they can do. Like I actually give discoveries and they do nothing but post hoc rationalization. And he says, ah, but you haven't presented any real, it's just a flurf tactic. Let's Debunk. move on from there. Proje We're not projection. Uh... <laughs> all right. So, um, I, I do want to ask right quick. Uh, we got a couple spicy ones here in the live chat. Right, you fellows are good for it, are you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Newsflash. Austin's opener is utter nonsense. He's just getting stuff wrong. Please check everything he said. It will set you free from cults and con men. Uh, it's from Kango 44. Thoughts? What's it? Yeah, like all that T Jump said the whole time. All that the chat said the whole time and all the super chats will say is that I'm wrong. They'll never offer specificity, but you can go research it, right? I just now actually quoted in context. It's not just misquoted, quote mind, in context, a person that was personally friends with Einstein that, that covered relativity and taught it at university for 20 years. One of the most well-known and established relativity experts ever explaining what I was claiming, right? I've given you all the math all the physics, it all checks out. So if you actually do go verify what I'm saying, that there's a kinematic and dynamic equivalence, you will see that it wasn't nonsense. But I will say, last thing, it is a very effective tactic. And I will also concede, T-Jump is really good at it. He's really good at it. One of the better ones. They even got me flustered at the beginning, right? Which uh, you know I'm sorry for. He's really good at it. If you just baselessly claim victory in a convincing manner, void of substantive specificity, it can lure in those not in the know. But you can look at the PowerPoint, look at the specific claims. I know I had to go fast and go fact check everything I said and go look at in the field on my channel. You'll see well, I'm talking to PhD astronomers that disagree with me about it. And they're agreeing with what I said in my PowerPoint, which goes to show you that that super chat is just a lie. Well, I don't need to defend myself. Actual science and actual philosophy work just fine. And so since he doesn't know what a post hoc rationalization is or what underdetermination is, I debunked all of his arguments like way, way earlier on in the debate. And there was nothing left just to give actual data and then show how the actual data compares to flurf data. And then, well, the actual data wins. And then that's, that's all there is to it. That's why he avoided the data like the plague, bro. I crushed your, you don't have any data. You have, yeah. they can't explain it. It's all post hoc rationalization. Good job. I already debunked that one, bro. 
You got nothing. Been answered, asked and answered many times by people who've actually researched this. You can just go ask cats. He'll, he'll do. He'll demonstrate it for you. Easy. We do have non CGI videos of space. What are you talking about? We love literal pictures of actual space from space. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Last three questions oh. have been muted, says uh, Ozian. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, I might have hit that when I uh, ran off to use the old you-know-what. Uh, so the first one was uh, from Congo. You can check it out in the live chat, but we were just answering mm -hmm. LJ's. Once you realize seawater doesn't curve, you wake up from globe religion. Uh, T-jump, at what size do you observe flat bodies of water start to curve? And then the next one was from LJ. Why do we have zero non-CGI videos of space in 2023? Uh, so I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know if you'd hear my toilet flushing. Come on now, guys. I got to be classy here. All right. Over you, what's it? As I mentioned that, right? T jump said that we do have them. And he said, I promise I'm right. Scientists agree with me. And what's it just doesn't understand there. We'll save some time. Um, I, I will say what I've discovered is there a lot of people say, Oh, Austin's scared to debate flat earth now. So he talks about geocentrism. No, what I've discovered is the people that just spew these remedial ad homs and stuff like that about flat earth, they're also not willing to be intellectually honest about geocentrism. So like why even discuss something as like, like worldview altering as flat earth? Let's start with the fact that you can't prove the earth is in motion and your own model, your own physics relativity says that you cannot. And if someone can't be honest and be like, well, yeah, according to relativity, the earth could be in the center of the universe. If they can't be honest about that, then why would I discuss something else with them? So uh, just to clarify, and that's why I was trying to explain to him, even if you believe in space missions and you believe in all this other stuff, according to your own models, physics or claimed physics, anomalous physics, it could be geocentric. And I encourage you to open your mind and think about that, bro think about it and then go read Stephen Hawking stubbornly persistent illusion who says oh well we choose the idea that we're not in the center based on humility and philosophical preference and that's not science right and so I just I just want people to know the truth and make their own decision um but anyway there you go any thoughts over there could be before? magical farting okay. fairies therefore magical farting fairies good job I love it with like dark matter, matter dark energy and All the big right. bang well, let's carry on there, fellas. Congo 44 once again, and uh, I'm going to keep a good eye on that uh, mute button, everybody. Uh, you know, I, I haven't done that in a hot minute. It must be because T jumps back, and uh, he's just he's pulling me back in the old days. I think it's been seven months since T jump has been here. Uh, you know, we're, we're glad to see you back on the forum, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you back for lots of more juicy discussions. Congo 44 for $5 says, Question for Witsit Have you done T jump's moon radar experiment yet as a truth seeker i would think you would want to do it as soon as possible uh no i haven't done it because it, it wouldn't mean anything to me because if the if the radar claims of the moon are true which if you actually i don't know anything about t jumps experiment but um i would like to see them shot at the moon and away from the moon but if the moon is plasma for example it could be many things then it, the ionization of the plasma would still reflect the radio wave depending on the megahertz of the fre the frequency meaning if the radio frequency is equal to or lower than the ionization or the frequency of the moon then it would in fact reflect it back which is, of course, the globe model's claim to try to save it away with the ionosphere from radio waves that go too far, right? And this is a well-known fact in physics in the lab that if you have like ionization, so plasma is just ionized gas, and you shoot radio waves at it, if the frequency of the radio wave is equal to or lower than the frequency of the ionized gas, it will reflect it back. Right. And then the duration of signal is how they claim to determine the distance. But if their assumption of the medium is wrong, which it is and top level of physics is now saying dark matter, superfluid and maybe more dense in space than we thought, blah, blah, blah. If the medium is different, the duration of signal is different. Thus, your distance 
interpolation is different. Now, I know some of these concepts are new to people, but just just digest what I said and research it. It's certainly not word salad. Any thoughts, John, before we move on? Word salad, absolutely, word salad. The experiment's real simple. If you bounce radio waves off of the moon and they bounce back to you, then the moon's round and you can tell the distance from the moon from wherever you sent the radio waves. And if the distance is approximately the same from anywhere where you send it from the moon, then guess what? The moon's a globe. Because if it was flat, you'd get vastly different distances when you bounce radio waves off of the moon and get them to come back. Very simple experiment, which it just spews word salad of things he doesn't understand to try to cover up the fact that he doesn't actually have an answer for any of the yeah. actual simple science. He avoided everything I said because I he's literally just buddy. addressed it. Except you didn't address that the did. ionization of gas, Which, oh my God. the frequency will reflect the signal back if it's equal to or less than, uh, avoided it, and you avoided that, that the assumption of the, the medium. Problem, it, you avoided that it. the assumption of the medium is required to determine the distance with the duration of the signal, and that's because I have a very curated answer that you cannot rebut and are ill-equipped to rebut, so it's okay. Which is, what you said was so inanely stupid because you don't understand the actual problem. The reason you bounce radio waves off the moon is to measure the distance. And so you bounce them from different places. So oh, none of that shit oh you said matters because it, all of that affects the radio waves in every direction the same. And so you still get to be able to triangulate the distance to the moon is equivalent from each different point you measure it, which means guess what? World not flat, bro. No, it doesn't mean that because the moon has a position and if the ionization frequency is equal to or less, if the signal sent is equal to or less, mm -hmm. then it will reflect back to you. And then if you are making an inaccurate assumption of the medium, which you clearly are, if you even research that, oh which you God, have it. So dumb. So, again, again saying, last word, that's all solved. That. That's that's all solved. Solved. About that. No, no, no. That's, that's all solved by if you I send the same radio wave. I gave him rub it. All right, just one second. I, I will revolve, I'll revolve uh, it right now. It's very simple. Okay. Send the same frequency from multiple different locations. It'll affect whatever the gibberish nonsense word salad you said. The same in both locations. And guess what? If you get the same numbers, world not flat, bro. So all of the stuff you said is invalidated by the method of the experiment I already proposed. You just don't understand it because you don't understand basic science. And First of all, the test obviously hasn't actually been done. Secondly, even it if literally it had has been, been done. even if it had no, yes, it yes, it absolutely it's has called, not. It's called ham radio experiments. These literally have been done many, They're many times ham radio every year. Experiments. <laughs> yes. well, what are they called? Moon to Earth, Moon to Moon, it, something, it, something. <laughs> um, They're called like moon, yeah, like Moon bounce. Moon self. Yeah, but look, here's the deal. It radio doesn't waves. prove the distance because yeah, you does. assume the medium. Okay, let me explain it to the room. 30 seconds. The way that they are claiming that you determine the distance to the moon with radio waves is you send a signal and it bounces back. They say, okay, it takes 2.2 seconds. So since we know space is a vacuum, okay, we can know how fast that radio waves propagate in a vacuum. Therefore, if we take the 2.2 seconds, use the assumption of a vacuum, we can tell you how far it's traveled through that vacuum because we know the rate of propagation of radio waves through the vacuum. If the medium is something else, for example, more dense, then it would be closer and your assumption would be incorrect, as well as it doesn't even have to be solid matter to bounce the radio waves back because just like the globe claims with the ionosphere, if the ionization of the gas... Again, none of that matters, Wits it, it. I it already debunked it back. all of that nonsense that's irrelevant to the experiment. The experiment doesn't care what the moon is made of. The experiment doesn't matter what how far the moon away is. What matters is, is, is the distance to the moon the same or different from each point you test the experiment? If the moon is here and you measure it from here, it's going to be closer than if it's from here and you measure it. So if the distance is vastly different, world flat. If distance the same from everywhere, world round. It doesn't matter what it's made of. It doesn't matter how far away it is. None of that gibberish word salad you said was relevant to the experiment was that you just don't understand basic science. And of course, it wouldn't even be the same on a globe. That goes to show there'd you. Be, there'd be a slight difference on a globe. Oh, on a flat okay. earth would be a big difference. Wait, so. why? How, how close does flat earth claim that the moon is? 
I forget, what was it like 6,000 miles or something? I no mean, one claims feet? that. You just did what i You have to straw man. You project No, no, there's earlier. lots of people who've claimed that. You projected you earlier saying that lots of crazy flat to, earthers. You projected earlier saying you have to mischaracterize your position, but that's all you can do. Okay. It's sophistry and mis- Next mis- one is coming in. Your world view. Next move on. on. You have no just chance of Why haven't you done the experiment yet? Why haven't you done the experiment? What's it? We've hit a wall here. I already explained it isn't exclusive evidence, and you should go back and watch the debate. Take notes and research the terms since you just debunked you with it. You're done. Okay. Next one is coming in, guys, from uh, Congo 44. Uh, you know, you got to like the spirit of these two fellas uh, here having this discussion. So hit that like button if you haven't already. Uh, we're having a good <laughs> time uh, having this uh, discussion back and forth. Next one's coming in for you, uh, T Jump. It says, Woodsit, do you understand neutrino detectors completely debunk you? Maybe T Jump could explain it to you. So we'll put it over to you, T Jump. Do you know what neutrino detectors are? Is- probably referring to the experiment where you can send neutrinos through the planet and uh like receive it on the other end and so you know that the world is round because um if you're like shooting a gun down and and someone detects it on the bottom then they must necessarily be below you uh as opposed to if the world's flat it wouldn't work probably what they're referring to okay so what he's clearly talking about is they claim to be receiving neutrinos from the sun underneath but if you actually look at it what they do is they interpolate the data through a model they assume the position of the sun and they actually run it through a graph that organizes the colors based on the assumed distribution of neutrinos which of course they claim can potentially go faster than the speed of light and pass through all matter and they don't know exactly what it is and they can't even interpret exactly how the machine itself is receiving it because they don't know exactly what neutrinos are and top level physicists will tell you all of that but i would like to point out all the super chats, T jumped the entire debate. All he could bring up is flat earth, flat earth, flat earth, flurf, 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 because they could never debate geocentrism. I would dunk on all of them 500 V1. They don't even know what the kinematic dynamic equivalence is. They don't know what the neotyconic system is. They don't know what the Newtonian analysis is. They don't know anything. They blindly believe the consensus. Okay. And that's why all these super chats are about flat earth. All that T jump is talk about is flat earth because they can't defend that the earth is a tilted, wobbling spinning ball revolving around the sun in space. They can't defend heliocentrism because their own model says, Oh, it could be in the center. We have no idea. So I just want the audience to keep an eye on that. Everything they talk about is flat earth, flat earth so that they can discredit me. Right? They can poison the well and discredit me because they can say flat earth is so stupid. Let's avoid the fact that Austin absolutely intellectually eviscerated T-Jump when it comes to geocentrism and he avoided it with all, all specificity the entire time. Right? So just it'd be cool if you guys can talk about the subject, but you uh, can't. I don't think you, you understand don't how know anything work, about it. Because when I say flat earth, I'm collectively also referring to geocentrism as both equally stupid. So anytime I refer to flat earth, it also covers the topic of geocentrism. So everything I said debunked all of your arguments and all of the flat earth arguments in addition to those. How do so neutrino it's, detectors it's debunk geocentrism? Uh, well, they, they don't. That wasn't my oh, argument. Oh, how does the moon argument. bounce debunk geocentrism? That was from a question, not during the debate. Okay, so nothing yeah. you've said debunked. Wait, 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 stop being stupid for a second. The <laughs> things I said during the debates were debunking your geocentric nonsense <laughs> name and one, your flat Earth nonsense. Name one. The you things. Said that you... shush, 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 shush. The things in the Q and A, which also address flat Earth questions, because you have stupid flat Earth beliefs in addition to that are not necessarily related to the debate topic, which was during the debate. So during the debate, I debunked all of your dumb geocentric nonsense and your flat earth nonsense with all of my arguments. And then we addressed some other stuff from the Q&A as well, but you don't understand how words work. So you have a problem intellectually with how those relate. Last there's, word a to you, there, there's a proportionate relationship between his uncomfortable, uncomfortability and ineptitude and insecurity and insults. So like, I don't understand how words work. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. All this stuff. That's it's proportionate relationship to how ignorant he is as he projects. Because if I went to ask him, name one thing specifically you said that debunked geocentrism, he's got nothing. He just started listing off missions and he- All of those missions. Every, yes. He, and, Sorry. And, and, all those missions. I don't mean to cut you off here. Just to kind of focus in on what we're doing right now with the q and A. I I know that he's uh, implicated you a bit there and I think he kind of- uh, Got well, just, just to give like there. a five second just, response. Well, I, I, this, I'll these definitely models let, yeah. make predictions which are successful. There you go. That debunks geocentrism. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll let you make that point. That's fine. Uh, but I do want to ask what's it the question here from the super chatter. And sorry, there was a fly that was bugging me. It was trying to Mike Pence me there for a second, and I wasn't going to let it happen. Jump on fire, like bro. If you right. think T Jump is like winning this debate, like I hope that you stay in your state of mind. 
because it's just pathetic. So I do want to uh, ask the question from Congo here, and then we're going to move on. Uh, so Witsit, do you know what the uh, – so do you understand neutrino detectors completely debunked you? Uh, I'll give you 10 to 15 seconds to kind of wrap up this question here, and then we'll move yeah, on I to did. Wade. I explained it. I explained how they don't. I explained that neutrinos are a phenomena that no one can fully explain. They claim it goes through all material. It may go faster than the speed of light. We don't even know what they are. All top-level physicists will tell you that. And whenever globe earthers bring it up, which is a diversion away from tonight's subject because they can't defend heliocentrism, like I explained, they claim that it's because we see the sun through the earth. But actually, if you go research the papers and read them, which I have, they actually run the neutrino observations and data through a certain algorithm, and then they start to throw out all the stuff away from where they assume the sun is through the earth, and then they create a graph and a visual illustration from that. That's what actually happens. And no one will actually address that. All right. This next one coming in again for you, Witsit, from Wade Eberly. Uh, why do the apparent epicycles of, epicycles, epicycles of the planet's motions fit so neatly into ellipses uh, when we center our perspective on the sun? Yeah. That looks so, like a bunch of typos to me. I'm sorry. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, this is just a fact that whenever heliocentrism was first proposed, because what had happened was they took Tycho Brahe's data, observations, and model, which was a geocentrist, right? They took his data and then tried to make it a heliocentric model with Copernicus. They had to add significantly more epicycles to the heliocentric model to make it work. So it's funny. So both systems have epicycles, and that's because if you look at the torus field, there are naturally epicycles within that elongated sphere that, that is the torus field, right? But whenever heliocentrism tried to take Tycho Brahe's data and make it a heliocentric model, it had to add significantly more epicycles to make the math work. So it's actually significantly more complicated and works way less efficiently than a geocentric central position. Okay. But, you know, who cares about facts, I guess, you know. All right. Let's try to get through this next one a little uh, bit quicker, I guess, because, uh, well, I guess, I mean, we still got like a 30 minutes before we'll get to that two hour mark that I kind of set that we'll try to get you guys out of here. Um, but I'm just trying to renege on saying this name. It's Swampy Pubes. What a fantastic name you have. Just like go wash up or something and change your YouTube name. Anyways, uh, Winsett, I disagree with you uh, just about every single belief you hold. But I have to admit, your new setup is nice, dude. Ah, uh, thank you, brother. What are you rocking over there? What's going on? I like the I like the chairs in the background there. You see those guys? Yeah, I like that. I haven't actually even like finished Couple setting anything up. But thank you. Got your nose. All right, now I'm going to get out of there. All right, so um, <laughs> uh, with, uh, so next one, LJ, brainwash TJ. If the moon was physical and asteroids were real, we'd have videos from Earth of asteroids hitting the moon by now. Why don't, oh, we asked that one while he was yep. out. Yes, sorry. Uh, Ozean Talks, uh, what journal did Popov uh, publish in? Peer review means that other scientists validated his results and not just published in a random paper. I don't see it. That's for you, what's that? Yeah, so I don't I don't know what it is because for some reason my my acrobat is not loading. But you can look up Newtonian mocking analysis of the Neo Tychonian model of planetary motion. Um, it's the European Journal of Physics. I wonder if that's good enough. Is the European Journal of Physics good enough? I wonder. No, now that it's the European Journal of Physics, okay, and he's well accredited. Now we have to try to discredit this guy because it is peer reviewed with a very renowned journal of physics. So that's called shifting the globos and a genetic files. All right. If you see me smiling, I was just reading some of the live chats there. They're kind of fun. All right. So let's carry on. Um, any thoughts on your side there, T Jump, while I scroll up here or carry on? Yeah, it was peer reviewed and debunked. So he's right that it was published and peer reviewed and then debunked. So that was kind of, I might, I, maybe I should have clarified that. It had to be peer reviewed and then accepted, like supported, confirmed. Like, yes, you can publish papers and journals and get them rejected. Sure. Oh, okay. Congrats. Oh, let me actually, let me point this out because let's be real. He has, he's never read the paper. He doesn't know anything about it. He claimed it was fake. Now he knows all about it. He doesn't know anything about it, but it wasn't debunked. Everyone concedes the paper's accurate. He didn't even propose that the no. earth is the Stop interrupting me. He no, I literally propose, gave you an example of rejecting all of He didn't even propose that the Earth was geocentric. He just said, look at the Newtonian 
Neo Tyconian analysis Ten mathematically seconds. and physically, and you will see there is an equivalence of inertial forces. And everyone conceded that that is in fact true. That's why it got published in the European Journal of Physics. No, right. that's not how publication works. You've never um, read you, it. Sh right, shush, let's shush, let's shush, let shush, shush. respond so it. We've got. Uh, let's few... educate with it on basic publications. Questions there are you. lots yeah, of publications. The fact that it was published does not mean everyone agrees, which it doesn't understand science number 3037. Oh, and when I actually gave the Cornell University response to this paper that shows actually debunked and wrong, uh, I think apparently he just ignored that. Maybe he didn't hear it. I'll, I'll give it again. In Self-Contradiction, Mackie and Geocentrism Entails Absolute Space by Herbert Hartman. This debunks everything in that paper, which is why it is rejected. Um, the fact that you got it published, good job. Good job, Florf. Um, but it's rejected by the consensus. And I forgot, I should have added this in. If you get peer-reviewed published papers, they have to actually be accepted by the consensus, not rejected by the consensus. That's important. You can publish papers in journals all the time. There's an entire journal about parapsychology. Good job. That doesn't mean people agree with it. It's just junk science. Dude, it's so funny. You've never read it. I've read it. It doesn't actually invoke absolute space. So you just got absolutely destroyed by any true intellectual that goes and reads the paper. I don't it think you understand how words work. Stop okay. interrupting me. It specifically denounces absolute space and says that that was the, the lethal assumption of Newton to assume that there was absolute space, which, of course, Einstein said that there was not. And, in fact, it says that there is angular momentum of the entire oh cosmos God. going around the Earth. How are you so in bad at this? See, it's like, I'm just talking over your head. Let's be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the paper specifically says his claim that it doesn't entail absolute space is debunked by his own paper because it's a self-contradiction, like literally the first words, in self-contradiction. This paper, which claims that there is no absolute space, actually entails absolute space. Please learn words. It does not, Please, though. please. Academic peer-reviewed paper, All Cornell right. University, actually yeah. sir, actually accepted by the consensus. We're really? Debunked. Did you, did you pull the consensus? Yes. Or did yes, just confirm your bias? Yes, I did. I pulled the consensus. Well, I've talked to 10 physicists personally that admit that the physics... No, listen. That admit that the math and the physics are completely viable and accurate. But you, you know all the consensus, and you've never even read the paper. You're laughably a sophist, dude. We can just... Did, did you forget the problem under determination? Did you forget the problem under determination? You can you make up guardian fairies to explain okay. everything. It doesn't make a difference. It didn't do that. It used a Newtonian mechanics. All oh, right, we're, we're moving on, fellas, changing. to the next super chat. Hate stares coming in. Uh, yeah, people act like this dude is winning. This, uh, th 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 this is not so bad. Nope. He says, "Good job, Ryan. Keep up the good All work." Insults. I, I have a, I have a super chat, guys. Look, somebody's complimenting me. You know, I like that. That's fine. Uh, ask debaters. Do you know the law of flat earthers? <laughs> Their uh, own citations contradict them, and you know it's good ones. They the don't. Law. They don't. They do. Though. They do. They literally don't, though. They literally do, though. So wait, 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 wait. Hey, watch this. I'm going to expose you because I've been pretty nice to you, frankly. You have no idea. Hey, T-Jump, according to relativity, could the Earth be in the center of the universe kinematically and dynamically? Yes or no? Kinematically and dynamically are not actual things in relativity. Relativity is indifferent to the position of the planet. It doesn't actually say anything about the position of the planet. This dude just said that kinematically and dynamically aren't actual things in relativity. Kinematics is about the geometric path, and dynamic is about the force that causes the path. If you knew the first thing about astronomy and astrophysics and relativity, you would know that there's a concession of equal justification of coordinate systems due to a kinematic equivalence, and that if you actually examine the mathematics and the physics of relativity, there's a dynamic equivalence, meaning the force that relativity invokes, the force that isn't a force that acts like a force, actually can be equally justified on a central position, which is why Einstein himself said everything occurs on the Earth as if the Earth's at rest, and it's just equally valid to say that the sun moves around the Earth or the Earth moves around the sun. That's so I already debunked you, and he's just spewing more word salad. Like, again, kinematic is not a thing. Kinematic is a relation between two other things. You need nouns there. You can't just say kinematic. It's not a thing. Dynamic, again, not a thing. You need nouns there, a dynamic relation <laughs> between two things. He doesn't understand physics, and he doesn't understand relativity. And I answered his question, which he said I wouldn't answer because he doesn't understand basic science. The, uh, the kinematic right. and dynamic equivalence within the heliocentric and geocentric model according to relativity. You don't even understand. It's obviously based on the relationship of different bodies. That's what the heliocentric and geocentric model is. It's a dynamic and kinematic equivalence. His rebuttal was those are not things. Okay, perfect. 
I told you I would expose you. You All didn't. Right. Good job. You failed. I objectively, so, so you, just you, need, did, you say there's a, a dynamic equivalence between this. You need a noun there. There needs to be a noun. There's no noun. It's just an adverb yeah. or an adjective. It doesn't mean anything. You can't just say adjective. It's adjective. Coping adjective. So Adjective, you, you know, right. before the adjective. We're going to move on to the bro. next super chat there, fellas. Uh, keep them coming in. There's lots of super chats. I'm going to set a 45-minute timer, I think, here uh, once again because that's well, usually – I'm going in like 10 minutes. All right. So that's a good idea then is then I'll set a timer Probably here. So we can you better get, get out of here, bro. Um, we're going to skip some of these ad hominy ones then, guys, and just move into the ones that are um, substantive, and I'm going to try to shush while I look for them. Um Run Boston Bear. T jump. All the discoveries you keep listing are biased in philosophy that infinite space is real. It's not. No one. one has played golf on the moon. You already read that one. Oh wow. Yeah. Well hey, that there one... are so many people coping in the chat, bro. That's crazy. That one's Why are you yeah. stealing my insult? I said you're coping. You can't steal my insult. Oh, I was just talking be original. About, I'm... I'm original. talking about how like people are pretending that you even got close to rebutting anything I've said. This oh, time. right. I said we're going to stay away from... People can understand words better than Witsit. Congratulations. Let's stay away from ad That's hominy stuff. We're going to focus here, guys. It's, LJ, more than that. Come on. how did T-Jump yeah. isolate gravity from electrostatics? 45 seconds, T-Jump. What's, what? What's the relevance to the question? I don't understand the question. All right. Uh, maybe you can give us a little insight. I'm going to pause the clock. Uh, what does LJ mean when they say, how did T-Jump isolate gravity from electrostatics? Okay. He's saying electrostatics is 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity is even claimed to be. And it's all material is intrinsically electrostatic because all molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. So if you're going to claim there's an additional force there that does the same thing as it, how can you isolate gravity from electrostatics if it's ever present? That's his question. Oh, so yeah, that's easy. Gravity is 40 orders of magnitude weaker than the electromagnetic force. And so if it was electrostatic, everything would be crushed together very quickly. So we can definitively show that it's a different force with absolute certainty. And if you don't know that, you're dumb. Dumb as rocks. All right. Next yeah, one. He didn't in. answer. <laughs> I literally just did. <laughs> if right. someone thinks you did, okay. Next one coming in. Donate to my cash app so I can make. What is your name? It's too long. I can't read it. No, I need five hours of this guy because apparently people think he's really doing something. All right. Can we set up a five hour debate, T Jump? We'll put some money on the line. Like, like just automatically you get paid five hours, but it has to be like timed. You can't interrupt. If I get paid, yeah. Paid. Absolutely. All right, cool. Let's cool, just let's play. Let's just play poker on the air, guys. Come on. Let's I think I can get fun. awesome clips, bro. Right. You're gonna go viral, bro. If we can get a five-hour awesome. stream out of you. Oh, my goodness, Austin, you can't explain the basic observation of boats disappearing over the horizon bottom first. Your only response will be to lie and say it doesn't happen. I feel bad for poor Witsit Jr. I didn't. Yeah, that's a little bad. Yeah, I mean, the they end. always have to talk about my beautiful ten-month-old baby because yeah, they talk about people's children that I'll can say never. That. Even get a female, yeah. But anyway, um, that's also again, you're so obsessed with talking about flat Earth because you can't defend heliocentrism, and I think it's pretty telling that not one response, not one super chat can defend heliocentrism. It's always about flat Earth, anyway. Yeah, the actual angular, the angular resolution is relative to the reception and propagation angles of what you are observing, and so if you're on the surface and you're six feet above it, but there's a hundred foot building, well, the bottom of that building or the bottom of a boat is closer to your eye level, which means that seconds. the propagation reception angles fall below the resolution angle quicker. This is very simple, and of course, the attenuation rate is higher at the bottom of the atmos of light because of the turbulence and the absorption rate due to the density of the medium. All right. Word salad. 30 seconds uh, on this one. Wisco Matt is off topic, but uh, I'll give you 30 seconds. I bet T-Jump believes a phone call was made from the moon to the White House in 1969, and that is believable. We lost technology to get back there. I have no idea about the phone call. I really don't care. We have been to the moon. I don't care about it. There was, whether, whether or not there was a phone call, I really have no position on all right. What's it? Why do, uh, sorry, this is also from a Wisco Matt. Uh, and thank you also, I should say to Congo 44. I'm sorry. We didn't read your question because it's ad hominy and crackling crow. Just send a winky face winking back at you. Uh, you good looking super chatter. Thank you for that. All right. So Wisco Matt says, what's it? Why do some physicists say there is a crisis in cosmology? 
um, because relativity doesn't match the actual observations. So you have the dark matter problem, which supposedly makes up over 80%, 83% of all matter in the universe, but they don't know what it is, can't define it. And then whenever they actually look at dark matter halos and galaxy, doesn't match the predictions. Also, you have the flatness problem that has to require like uh, mathematically impossible odds to have the perfect energy density for the universe to be flat. You, that's called a fine tuning problem. I could go forever, but basically the cosmological crisis is that they can't explain the dark energy problem or the dark matter problem problem and that space has to be expanding and accelerating four times the speed of light four times faster than the speed of light and they can't explain the causal mechanism or the actual energy for that expansion and they also have a hubble tension problem where the actual uh rate at which it supposedly expands doesn't match with their different methodologies which they use to determine distances and everything else so they're in a true state of crisis because they have no actual causal mechanism for gravity they can't explain dark matter they can't explain dark energy Ten and seconds. many other things there you go Oh, well, you were right at the end there. So, uh, yeah, let's continue on there. There are actual things we actually see, oh, and science we can't explain yet. them. Oh, no. See, that's all he's got. Science doesn't know everything yet. They're like, no, no. All right. It refutes your model. You can't offer specificity. You're out of your league. Let's move to the next question. All right. They can't explain it. Therefore, I'm right. Argument from ignorance. No, it refutes your model. You'll you'll catch up one day, but you'll just never actually publicly argument. say it. All right, bye. My, my, uh, bro, is, is Biden <laughs> come out with a new booster, bro? All right, let's continue on. Maury Smithville has T Jump ever had a debate where he doesn't call the other person an idiot? Uh, so they're accusing you of making too many ad hominems throughout the debate. Um, any thoughts on that? And then we'll move on. I exclusively call people idiots when they are significantly intellectually beneath me and not worth my time to actually do any research. So oh, I, I do lots of actual real humble, debates bro. with like real professors who are really actually intellectually and have valid points, but. Which it is not that it makes up bullcrap science numbers and doesn't understand things and doesn't actually do research and doesn't understand criticisms. And All right. Doesn't listen to people who actually. <laughs> I'm sorry, teach you, but we'll let you just go on a big <laughs> <You're> cal <laughs> about humility, bro. You guys, Wait, I'm, you guys, I'm you guys go got all that. Books. Out. I saw one of the questions. Thank you. I'm gonna go grab a book. Okay, go ahead. Next question for me. It's right, it's right there. But uh, no, the next one's for T Jump. So you go ahead Perfect. and uh, yeah, I was gonna say I think you guys have kind of uh, you've been at each other quite a bit throughout the debate. So I think everybody knows how you feel about each other's thoughts. Uh, you know, nobody's confused about how uh, how you feel about that. So uh, donate to my cash app says uh, another win for T Jump. Austin Whitless got schooled. So Thank you gotta. You fan there they just uh, came in to say that and have a little fun so uh, thanks for that it's ninja witsit is out of his depth quick get him a life jacket well gee now that i'm reading all the ad hominem ones he's gonna come back and be like ryan you you said all right uh base theory says after show on my channel base theory oh du a dual after show so you can join base theory on his after show or base theory i mean if you want to join me and ozzy and over on matters now uh, i'm going to put the uh, link in the live description here in just a moment so uh if anybody wants to join us over there uh, they're more than welcome to it and we'll talk a little bit about uh what we witnessed here uh, as far as this discussion what did we witness everybody what went down? Now Witsit has returned for the book. We shall return to our epic live discussion. So, uh, welcome back. You wanted Witsit. to show us a book. Yeah, someone asked about books that they can read from based on the stuff I'm saying. So I'm going to run through a few books super fast because these are fire books. So this is Robert Lobber, Harvard University. Uh, talks about how ether is inevitable, a different universe. Uh, yeah, Frank Wilkosek, Nobel Prize winner, uh, Lightness of Being. Also talk about how his ether is inevitable. Uh, he's a quack. Longing for the Harmonies, also by Frank Wilkozek, explains that everything's intrinsically vibrational and results in an ether. Seeing red, showing that the uh, red shift distribution of the universe is distinctly impossible within the heliocentric model. Um, that is by Halton Arp. And then All this right. is the Nicholson Boy experiment. And this is The Stubbornly Persistent Illusion by Stephen Hawking himself, which is a forward of Einstein, or basically uh, he writes a forward and then puts all of Einstein's quotes supporting it, which is that the stubbornly persistent illusion that the Earth is in the center of the universe is unavoidable. All right. Uh, For Harry Potter, you need more, more useful information. Yeah, Stephen Harry Hawking. Potter. Stephen Hawking is Harry Potter. Perfect rebuttal. All right, so uh, from what I know, T-Jump doesn't have much time, so let's try to keep it to 30 seconds here going forward. T-Jump doesn't even re realize geocentric doesn't need dark matter, so him explaining it is just irrelevant is another win for Witset. 30 seconds, T-Jump, to respond. 
again, dark matter is a phenomenon. We see something happening and they need to explain that somehow. They explain it with magic space goo. So that that is their dark matter. They have magic space goo as their dark matter. The extra stuff there that explains the orbits of the planets around galaxies is space goo. There is, they're also claiming there's extra stuff there we don't know about. And it's space goo ether. Like, I don't, this is not a hard thing to understand. The flurfs and geocentrists also are explaining dark matter with something else. They just don't, they just somehow claim it's not the same problem. All right, that's time there. So next one, Wisco Matt, T-Jump. I have never seen someone act so smug while all of his arguments are fallacious. Appeal to authority, appeal to cons- uh, consensus, ad homs, et cetera. Uh, so you got another uh, critic in the uh, live discussion there. Any thoughts for them before we move on? Uh, well, appeals to authority and consensus are only fallacious if they're not actual authorities. And so appealing to the actual authorities isn't fallacious. Stanford Encyclopedia Philosophy uh, on fallacies number nine, I think. Yeah, if you think that it's automatically a valid argument because your perceived authority says it, it's intrinsically fallacious. The evidence has to support it. It's pretty simple. Well, that's that's actually true. Which it is correct there. The reason uh, their authorities is because they make the discoveries who are not the flurfs or GS because they don't make the discovery. The I like to point out also that like with the dark matter thing, bro, like you're just completely off the mark. If you assume relativity, then dark matter has to exist. That's why many astrophysicists are proposing modified Newtonian dynamics All to right, replace relativity so that it doesn't need dark matter. Geocentrism doesn't need dark matter at all, and there's a variance of potential explanations without it. Duh. Yeah, right. It needs space goo ether, right? It, it, geocentrism can use that, yes. It, the vibratory oscillations of a background medium resulting and in... that explains the same data that dark property. matter... I'm over your ad, bro. Let's move does, on. Does that explain the same data dark you're matter not in, is you're, You don't know is that, is that a yes or a no? Well, uh, no. Does, does the yeah. space goo ether explain the same data dark matter is meant to explain? Well, no, because no. dark matter explains the leftover from relativity. The data to explain is the stuff moving in the sky. Relativity doesn't that's, work, so you need dark wait. matter. If you throw dark matter out, you can explain all not the stuff answering in the, the question. sky. All right. We're going to move on it. to the next question yeah. there, guys. Yahooligan is coming in. We're $2 Canadian, uh, an Ontarian fella who has been uh, co-modding here on Modern Database. So give Yahooligan some uh, yahas in the live chat there. He's a fantastic fella and really easy to get on with as all of us uh, Canucks seem to be uh, generally, except for, you know, the ones I know, I guess, besides myself, right? I'm, I'm, I'm all right, right? And, you know, I'm not one of those awful Canucks, am I? Yeah, I am, secretly. All right, so, Yahooligan, thank you, Witsit and T-Jump, for the debate. I have no problem arguing for atheism, says OZ and Talks, which is where we're going to have our after show. Uh, I'm going to link that in the live chat in a second here. Esteban Ilbaca, Witsit, dark energy is what we don't know with the physics we do. Relativity, it can be explained by modifying or rewriting relativity. Gravity is a thing either way. Geocentricism can't handle that. Okay, it's so funny that you guys say things you don't understand. Okay. I was getting if ready to assumed, read that. If, like, if you assumed Newtonian gravity, if you assumed Einsteinian gravity, both of them would necessitate you say the Earth could be in the center. I gave you the papers, the math, and the physics. You guys will never rebut it. I've given it to many astrophysics. In addition, okay, they're modifying Newtonian dynamics or replacing relativity because it doesn't work. Well, if the Earth's in the center, there's a variance of issues or variance of examples of things that could make it work. I can give you, go to my Telegram. You'll see all the links, all the information. Go to my YouTube, right? But for example, if quote unquote gravity is simply an emergent property of the oscillations of the fluid-like background medium, that would explain all the observations. And this is an astrophysics professor at the uh, university in Australia explaining that it would be akin to an ether. Turns out maybe we overlooked it the whole time. These aren't just random quacks. These are lifelong experts and the evidence supports it. I encourage you to not listen to someone just claiming that the archaic 1905 example is still true and then jump into 2023 and look at the evidence all right uh so before we move on here we got quite a few more super chats uh t jump if you did need to jump out for a second there uh and have a bathroom break like we all did or uh well i gotta go i gotta get i've got dinner plans you've got stuff to do okay so um yeah how long do you have uh, potentially to go through the rest of these but you know not any time at all. I got to go like now. Like oh, okay. Ago. All right. Well, that's all right then. Uh, big round of virtual applause for uh, T-Jump. T-Jump, before I let you go, uh, I'll give you the floor. Um, you know, one to two minutes. Closing statement. Potato. 
All right. Thank you. Good night. All right. All right cool, man. Like, hit me up. We're going to do the five hour stream. <laughs> Pay me. You got to send me well, the PayPal first. The money. Bro, is check this section. We're going to start a little fun. We'll throw you a few hundred bucks and you got to sit there for five hours and you got to talk about all these different things. And then we're going to just clip you up and go viral. If you're sure, down. Sounds good. All right. Perfect, bro. See you. Have a good one, man. All right. Enjoy your, uh, your date there. D jump. And thanks for coming out. And, uh, it's just me and you there now. Uh, what's it? This happens. just get awkward. Me? Hey, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was being so like intense earlier. Where I was like, "I'll oh, leave modern day debate." Bro. But like, dude, I seriously, I had a lot of stuff going on. I took this debate last minute, you know. And I'm like, bro, if I can't talk, I'm gonna get triggered. But you, you pulled through, bro. You made sure that we were both oh. able to talk. So. Oh yeah. No, I'll never let you down in that regard, buddy. You know. I don't want you to think I was like mad at you. I just had to like say something because I was getting. Like, I'm like, bro. Come no, on. I was. I was trying to weave through it. I was like, okay, is he is he talking to T Jump or is he talking to me? Because I was like, I, you know, there's there's only so much yeah. that I can do. So I, you know, I I gotta try to make sure that everybody is uh, getting an honest honest representation of your guys uh you know in the way that you, you you as individuals interact on these subjects i think that's the yeah, important i prefer thing. back and but forth let's you know not, because like um, if you can just concisely back and forth you get to a lot more info but that was it just wasn't it wasn't happening so i appreciate yeah. you uh bringing order brother no problem uh yeah it so, got smoked <laughs> well let's uh yeah so we'll, we'll hyper analyze the debate in the after show if you want to join us over there what's it uh where are you going after show where uh me and ozzy and uh, we started a new show called uh matters now we finally just got the tag all figured out so i'm gonna put that in the live chat and you can join us over there and uh ozzy and would actually i think be really excited if you did join us so i'll chat with you guys for a little bit yeah i don't, I don't know what the, what's the channel uh, I'll uh, I'll put it in the live chat before we uh, disconnect on the uh, stream here. But let's carry on with our super chats here, Witsit, if you don't mind. Um, are you good with that, Witsit, if we want to go through a few more of these? Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks, buddy. All right, Nathaniel for nine ninety nine. Witsit is the best of the flat earth debaters by a mile. Can't help but wonder what kind of legitimate, legitimate scientific learning or process he could be involved in if he didn't waste it on such nonsense. So they, they backhanded. Oh, man, sorry about that. No, that's cool. That's, that's cool. Um, yeah, well, it turns out, bro, that most of mainstream physics in 2023 is very limited and confined due to philosophical bias that people don't even know are there. So I'm glad that I'm not inside of that. If I, if I had of like, I, I I'll be honest, bro. I got a college scholarship playing football. So it was like half athletic, half academic. And I just partied. I could even go to class or whatever. But if I had of like been responsible and got like a physics degree, I might have been lost in the sauce. I may have been like, yeah, you know, photons, lightweight wave particle duality, you know? I mean, oh man, have you guys heard about the galaxy distribution? Like, I don't know, right? So I'm cool with it. I'm content with it. And I will say, I, I kind of see where you're coming from. I don't think that dude is, I think that that probably took a lot from that person to try to tip his hat to me. And he had to finish it with that. But I appreciate the compliment. I know where you're coming from and uh, why you had to present it that way. But I think the... Uh, yeah the truth always has to step outside the box so i'd rather do that well let's read this next one here uh dylano says what's it it doesn't matter if something can ex be explained in different ways what you need is to provide a model that you can use to make novel testable predictions you don't know yeah. what evidence is all right so thoughts there okay. with it yeah yeah uh my prediction from my model is that everything that we ever observed till the end of mankind's history will go around the earth. Everything will move around the earth and everything will complete circuits within a year. So everything in the sky is on the same yearly cycle. Everything will move around the earth forever. That's my prediction, okay? Coincidence, that's what we've observed forever and that's what we will observe forever, okay? That's what, that's just how it goes. So the actual default position based on all empirical evidence is that the earth is in the center, bro. If you think that it's actually flying around the sun, it's just an illusion. Just give me some evidence. Stop ad homing me. We can maybe make some progress, but the all evidence right. doesn't exist. Next one, Ben Rook for $10. Whitsit and his camp have not actually produced helpful predictions and or discoveries that have projected science forward. I would really like Whitsit to address this point specifically. Well, you got him here, Ben. Actually, all have, all predictions, all scientific advances assume that the Earth is stationary and in the center. All of them. 
literally everything. Even if you believe in satellites and you believe in missions in space, if you believe in anything, anything, if you believe in UFO, everything, bro, pl like plane advancements, the the little triangle, little UFO jumps, which my friend has seen is pretty crazy. You know what I'm saying? They're not unidentified, just the military classified them. What I'm saying is all of that assumes a stationary Earth. Everything, if you believe in satellites, they assumed an Earth-centered, Earth-fixed coordinate system with the universe moving around it, causing real inertial forces in their math. Everything, including the fact that there's a ether drift and that GPS actually utilizes a, a preferred direction of light that goes faster in the same direction the sky spins and gets faster the higher you go. All of that assumes the Earth is central and stationary. So literally every piece of technology ever has assumed the Earth is stationary and in the center. And your model claims, well, yeah, you can treat it like that. You have to treat it like that. But it's just a stubbornly persistent illusion. It's just an illusion. So... It's an ironic question, and you won't accept it because you're going to start suffering from cognitive or whatever, but that's just a fact, bro. Like, every technology assumes the Earth's in the center of the, the quote-unquote universe. All right. Well, let's uh, – here's what I'll do. I'll put on that 30-second timer again, and we'll try to get yeah, through sorry, these. There's a, there's a lot of them, actually. Right, I'll, I'll keep it really concise. A lot of people are excited about you. this debate uh, between you and TJ. I don't want to be here forever either. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I was going to say, uh, you might underestimate how many Super Chats came in, right? Uh, Guillotine. Witsit drops big science words into his conspiratorial nonsense to pretend, one, he understands the concepts, and two, science is on his side. 30 seconds. Yeah, people just say that I pretend, but they'll never actually specifically say, oh, this is why you were wrong about this phrase or this principle. Go look up what I said, slow it down if you need to, and look up every single word, every single principle. You'll see it's all in context. It's all legitimate. I didn't make anything up. I did thorough research. You can go to my channel to check it out. All right, beautiful. Um, nice and quick. So, John Carpen, if heliocentrism and geocentrism can be explained equally well using dynamic equivalence, how does the geocentric, uh, geocentric equation remove the need for dark matter? 30 seconds. Yeah, because um, the reason that we threw out the ether was because we did the Michelson Morley and it didn't detect the Earth's orbit. So they said, oh, well, either the Earth is stationary or there's no ether. So they threw out the ether and then they came up with all kinds of crazy stuff that things contract, but you can't tell. Time slows down, but you can't tell. We don't have to do that. If, the, if we just accept the very precise interferometry measurements that the Earth is stationary, then you have an ether background, which is what quantum physics has proven definitively at this point. Then you have a substantive background and you don't need dark matter, nor do you need dark energy. The only reason you need dark matter is because it has Time. to be emptiness and nothingness. All right. David coming in. What's it? Explain how the Michelson Morley result and the Michelson Gale Perlison result together wreck heliocentrism. 30 seconds. Michelson Morley was trying to detect the orbital motion around the Earth, and it got a no result, although it did show an interference pattern. It wasn't what was predicted. Michelson Gale Pearson showed the sidereal rotation, so the daily rotation of the sky, for example, uh, which is 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4.1 seconds. It measured it perfectly with the assuming the ether within the technology. So if you have doesn't measure orbit, measure sidereal rotation, then the only feasible explanation is that the Earth's not moving, but the sky is moving, and there is no orbit to motion. Beautiful. Uh, I think when I said time, you were just ready to wrap up anyway. So hopefully I didn't uh, interject uh, and people can hear you. Here you go, uh, ben, for $5. Uh, I'm going to give you a break here and just read some of these nice fan chats. Flat Earth is the red pill. It keeps you safe from the globalist agenda. It kept my blood pure. So you got a super chat fan there. And that's his first super chat. So Ben felt very inspired uh, by what you were saying and decided to much give love, his first brother. super chat. So thanks for that. Thank you so much. Much love, brother. No third super chat oh my goodness it gives us the third super chat still an early one i was gonna say i gotta read those they give the, the celebration for the third one look at that uh proud flurf what's it just gets it they don't get tired of getting flat smacked level heads flat earth fridays uh what's it i think has stepped out for just a second again so i'm gonna take an opportunity all right i'm trying to find my charger bro um oh I yeah, flat, gonna, flat Earth, flat Earth Fridays on Twitter. I can hear you. If, I'm just going to try to find my charger. It's in this big pile over here. Flat Earth Fridays on Twitter. Shout out to them. They're a bunch of legends. And uh, I vibe with them tough. So, if, you know, you want to go debate it. You want to go talk about it. Every Friday, I think it's roughly 8 p.m. Eastern, and it goes for many hours on Twitter spaces. Flat Earth Fridays. Shout out to them. They're legends. All right. Excellent. Um, That's for T-Jump. T-Jump. And what's it? I have done T-Jump's ham radio experiment. You can too, bro. 
I explained how it's not exclusive and it was hand wave dismissed. And I've been trying to get an answer to it for five years, which speaks for itself. You guys can't rebut it. All right, next one. What's it? It doesn't matter if something can't be explained in different ways. Sorry, this is from Dillano. Uh, I should give it the name first. Dillano, thank you so much for your super chat. What's it? It doesn't matter if something can be explained in different ways. What you need to provide is a model that you can use to make novel, testable predictions. You don't know what evidence is. Yeah, but again, I explained that the geocentric model predicts that everything, including distant galaxies, will move in relation to the Earth. The heliocentric model actually predicted the Earth's in a tiny little insignificant corner tucked away, and it doesn't matter. And you'll see redshift, blue shift, random motions everywhere. We actually saw that everything moves around the Earth. You updated your model to say, oh, it's an illusion. Yeah, I promise it looks like that, but it's not like that. So the novel prediction burden is on you because all actual evidence matches our prediction and of course mine is that there's no dark matter there is no dark energy the earth's in the center and everything we ever observed for the rest of recorded history will show the earth in the center it's very simple you just don't want to accept it all right next one coming in congo 44 which it is pretty arrogant to think that people have not done their experiments i have it takes about an afternoon to debunk almost everything you said in the last five years Thoughts, what's it there for 30 seconds? There's another baseless claim for substantive specificity. I explained the moon balance, and then the fact is you can't even explain how uh, radio waves over 100 megahertz, which is far beyond the supposed ionosphere that reflects it down and saves the globe, go over 2,500 up to 3,000 miles, but it would penetrate the ionosphere. Thanks for playing. Microwaves also do line of sight. Uh, beam divergence of less than a meter down to one millimeter. And there's no diffraction, no bending, no refraction, and no bouncing off the ionosphere. We refuted the globe in many ways, and that's not what this was about, but thank you for playing. Alrighty. Uh, Justin, coming in for 10. What's it? You make assertion, claim statements that things debunk something does not make the case. You haven't defended any of the claims you make. You just assert them. Trust me, bro, plus wrong jargon in quotation. See, you see how every single supposed debunk of me has nothing specific in it. Because everything I said specifically can't be rebutted. I think that an intellectually honest audience member will see that. None of it's being... If you can tell me, oh, but the physics says that actually the inertial forces don't work the way that you say, I will rebut it. But you'll never do that because you can't do that. And the fact is that your own model with Einsteinian or Newtonian mechanics necessitates a kinematic and dynamic equivalence. If you're not familiar with those terms, it's okay. Just go research them. They're simple. I defined them in the opener. And I encourage you to research it more. The truth is that... Uh, your model's falling apart. It's in a cosmological crisis. The geocentric model doesn't have the dark matter or dark energy problem. It's just chilling, as it always has been and always will be. All right, Charles Lehner coming in. Sorry, new to this type of debate. Probably has been stated before. But what's it? How, do you, how does your view account for celestial navigation? Okay, so that's another flat Earth question, but it's that we actually see in the hemisphere, so we have an azimuthal grid of vision, the actual curvature of our limit, which you can simply understand this. Go out to the ocean. I was just at the ocean the other day. Go look at the ocean because I was paying attention, right? You have peripheral vision. You know how you can't see all the way to left and right? You have a limit. Well, look out at the ocean. What you'll see is it looks like a giant circle around you. It's not because of the curve of the Earth, even if you thought it was a globe, because it's way smaller than that. You have a curve around you. Okay, we have an azimuthal grid, a hemisphere of limit around us, and so we see everything within that limit. The globe says, oh, well, no, there is no limit. We can see forever. We're Superman. We see in perfectly straight lines, and that curve is because the Earth is curving. So if you understand that we don't see forever, then it explains everything, including celestial navigation. You map, map it in an azimuthal grid. All right, so a uh, little chance for you to take a break here, and I'll read some of these uh, uh, super chats that aren't directly okay, to perfect. you. What's it? Uh, yeah, you can take a chance to look for that charger, buddy, if you want. Look for your charger. It's fine. Uh, What's it? Great job as usual with this debate. Keep it up. T-Jump, the clam chair kills me every time. Uh, next one says, t just says debunked without any specifications, followed by an ad hominem. So, uh, T-Jump, if you're watching this afterwards, uh, you know, maybe you'll have a live uh, after show and you can respond to Robert Tozy. But I uh, did want to read your uh, super chat there, just uh, where it's given. Uh, what's a little break there? Swampy, uh, gross, old, nasty pubes. I'm donating just to make Ryan read my name again. Great job tonight, gentlemen, and Ryan, too, I guess. Well, thank you, I guess, to you, swampy old nasty 
raggedy old. Anyways, uh, just remind everybody, since uh, Woods is looking for his charger there, uh, we do have our tickets linked in the description uh, to DebateCon 4. So Dallas, Texas is where we're going to be uh, hanging out. If you haven't already checked out the tickets in the live description if you're in the area uh, I would encourage you to do so we're gonna have uh, wits it there if you enjoy what you're hearing here tonight uh, he's gonna be hanging out uh, debating with Leo Phileas uh, Matt Dillahunty is gonna be there along with Aaron Raw David Wood um, along with um, a Andrew uh, Wilson from the crucible and a couple other people as well uh, I was going to say, i got to bring up the uh, promo here. Destiny's going to be there. Yes, of course. So uh, I see there's 800-odd of you watching right now. Hit that like button if you haven't already. We're just getting through our Q&A here uh, and trying to get through some of the uh, ones that aren't directly related to T-Jump. The next one was from Run Boston Bear. Hey Ryan, thanks for modding and being a lighthearted person. Uh, well, you're welcome, Run Boston Bear. I, I am a pretty lighthearted person uh, generally. I feel like if we ever get to the point on Modern Day Debate where I need to really drop a hammer, everybody's going to be like, okay, if Ryan's upset, then then something must be wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm hoping that that, that that will be the fallout. After hearing Witsit many times, you must realize the Earth is not a globe. High five, says Ron Boston Bear. Uh, so that one was also a compliment for you there, Witsit. Uh, he said, mm -hmm. after hearing Witsit many times, you must realize the Earth is not a globe. High five. So high five to you there, buddy. Space Miner says, our reviews of a peer required to have a peer review also to be considered a proper peer review. So we're 10 minutes over, and we're going to try to wrap these up quick, guys. Many physicists peer review the Newtonian neo tychonian analysis of planetary motion. They acknowledge that the math and the physics all work, as well as relational mechanics. I personally sent it to a PhD in physics and astronomy, or a PhD in astronomy, a professor. He runs a planetarium. He came back and told me, yes, all the math checks out. It is legitimate. I have a couple questions. So the truth is that the math and the physics is indisputable and that all the peers acknowledge it. They just disagree with the conclusion based on philosophical grounds. I encourage you to read the paper if you don't know about some of those terms because you're not well-researched. Go watch In the Field, which it gets it next episode on the first absolute legend coming on. You should check it out. All right, next one coming in here. Uh, what's it? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, he had a great job as usual. Uh, that's from T Baggins. Uh, much love, brother. Oh, I met you, bro. Much love, bro. And, yeah, it's always fun when we see people that are in the live chat that we've met and uh, hung out with. Eric William May, wits it crushed it as usual. T Jump never researches, never heard of Lunar Wave. Uh, a normie taught me about Lunar Waves eight years ago. Uh, a ghoul. Oh, there's the Canadian coming out in me. Oh, gee. All right, well, let's move on there since that's mostly towards bro, D. Bro, get out of that place, bro. Come to freedom, brother. Come to Florida. You can hang out, bro. I got a pool. <laughs> you got a pool. Come to freedom. <laughs> uh, you, we won't talk about that right now. All right, so <laughs> come to the after show. We could talk about what I, uh, okay. how I feel about uh, where right, I brother. am. Uh, Alexander L. Witsit, draw a diagram of how a boat goes over the horizon. Uh, the boat goes over there. Okay. As the boat leaves, because I live right by many oceanic horizons, okay, the boat, it goes away, and then it starts to disappear from the bottom up. How far away it does that changes based on the day. The bottom layer of the Atmos is the most dense, so light gets absorbed in that portion of the Atmos faster. It's called attenuation because it's more turbulent and more dense. Also, the ankle of the light that you're receiving is smaller at the bottom of the boat relative to your eye level. So it drops below the resolution angle due to the reception and propagation angles sooner. Just look up the terms. I love you guys. It's very simple. If the earth was flat, the boats would have to disappear from the bottom up. And if you can't let go of that, I'm sorry. I still love you. All right, Balthaz uh, Balthazar says for 499, the fact that there's a global flat earth conference amuses me global and flat a uh, global in capital letters so they're kind of making a joke yeah. i think about that uh, it's phrasing. called international and if you went there i promise you wouldn't be acting near as bad like that's the right the reason that none of them do come danny faulkner came and didn't say a word the whole time 
my presentation. He didn't have a word to say. He didn't have a word to say after. Because you guys talk big on the internet, but why don't you come where there's 500 of us just chilling, showing love, hugging everyone. Everyone's laughing. Everyone's having fun. Different points of view, but still accepting each other. If you guys come and try to act like this, we would just chill and laugh and intellectually eviscerate you. You guys would never come. So, I mean, I hope you guys maybe man up next year. All right, Pythagoras, do those books say the solar system doesn't exist? I'm not sure what books they're referencing, but you go ahead there. What's it? 30 seconds. Oh, uh, what the book what the book says, like for example, specifically this one, Stubbornly Persistent Illusion by uh, Oh, your Stephen books Hawking. that you brought up. That's of course, yes. Yeah. What it says is, well, the earth could be in the center in the solar system, the soul lore system that lures your soul into insignificance and unimportance, actually isn't exclusively true. And that the evidence shows the earth could be in the center. And then what he says in this book, and I think it's on page Five like seconds. 200 something, is, well, I believe that we're not in the center based on humility because I think it would be more humble to think we're not special and in the center. So that's what the book said. All right. So uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry if I skipped a few of those ad hominy super chats. So if you're in the live chat right now and you're like, you didn't read my super chat, it's probably because if you read it, uh, you weren't being very kind. And uh, we're trying to keep it substantive while we get to the end of the debate. Uh, and I'm going to shush now because I'm wasting more time. Simon Allen, how long does it take for the sun to orbit uh, the earth? The same amount of time that they claim. Oh, the sun moves around the earth every day. Okay, it's got it's 26, 24, or 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4.1 seconds, whatever. We have sidereal rotation. And technically, you have the sidereal rotation, the solar rotation is slightly different, but within just a very small amount. Everything moves around the earth every single day, just constantly moves around the earth every single day. And there's also an annual cycle of distant galaxies that create circuits and they complete their circuits once a year. So everything moves around the earth. There is no evidence that the earth's moving around the sun. It's very simple. And the, the sun completes its... Uh, its movement within the ecliptic uh, once a year. Very simple. Excuse me. All right, so Earth first, space later. Heliocentrism requires proving you can violate natural laws like fluid statics and gas pressure, which is impossible. Yeah, exactly. Necessary antecedent to gas pressure is physical containment. You can't have a gas pressure system, which people claim that somehow at most doesn't mean gas, even though it means air, which is defined as gas by definition, adjacent to a near-perfect vacuum without seeking equilibrium and filling the available space. It requires all kinds of anomalous physics. I call the heliocentric model anomalous physics. It's like, oh, well, sure, physics is like this on the Earth, but I promise out in space and with the globe, it's different. It's an anomaly. So, yeah, you have to just... You have to just want to believe it because you're scared of what people may think. And I encourage you to free yourself from that bondage because it's it's not a good way to live. Eric Rappelding says, what's it? You say GPS requires a preferred direction for the speed of light. Reference yep. and citation, please. Yeah, uh, you can look up um, Ron Hatch, who is actually brought in to correct it. You can also look up, uh, I think I may have showed it in my presentation. If not, go to my telegram, t.me slash wits it gets it. Um, and you can see, I'll drop it in there after this, but, uh, we have many different observations and experiments that have measured the fact that the light propagates faster, lower and higher. I mean, uh, uh, in a certain direction and higher, as you get higher to the sky, the light goes faster and it goes faster in the same direction. The sky moves and the actual GPS, which I will drop those links in as well. And Ron Hatch just demonstrated this definitively, uh, GPS has to account for, the speed of light being faster in that direction because when it sends out the GPS signals, it's actually different duration of signal in the direction of the same direction that the sky moves. So it's fascinating, and you've never been told that because it's it's uncomfortable for the modern cosmology. All right, let's move on to the next one here. We're getting near the end there, Woodset, and then we can uh, uh, clear on out and uh, clean up here. Let's see. Melligan says, uh, what's it listening to you is like an ASMR drivel. Sorry, what? Um, yeah, that's kind of just an ad hominem, ASMR drivel. Well, you know what? You know what? Um, 
you know what? ASMR has its own place, guys. But uh, I don't I think know that's that what is. we heard here. Uh, it's it's like a thing that pe- puts people to sleep. It took me a second to realize I was like ASMR. Mm-hmm. I I thought that might have been a technical term for a second there, and then I remembered my wife Co-parted. talks about that every once in a while. You're coping, brother. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so uh, no, no, they're coping. I'm no, 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 not I, yeah. I'm just saying I'm sorry that I read that out loud. Uh, you can read whatever, bro. I don't care. I was skipping those at homes. Balthazar says, as someone who has actually derived and utilized all the Einstein and Newtonian equations from scratch and actually sent the CubeSat into space, this man has no idea what he's saying. Anything to say to Balthazar? Wait, wait. He said they. He said who did it? What was the beginning? Uh, let's see. Let me just Sorry. scroll up here. Like reading. Oh, so I almost lost it there. As someone who actually derived and utilized the Einstein and Newtonian equations from scratch and actually sent a CubeSat into space. CubeSat? Is that how you say that? Yeah, CubeSat. Okay. This man has absolutely no idea what he's saying. Any thoughts for Balthazar there? Yeah, he's just baselessly hoping people are wooed by the fact he claims to have sent a satellite somewhere. But CubeSats aren't even impressive, bro. Why would you come in public and flex CubeSats? It's super weird to me. But anyway, I guarantee you that in your equations, you accounted for inertial forces and you used an Earth-centered, Earth-fixed coordinate system. I know that for a fact because I know people that have sent up, sent up CubeSats. So, And I've actually read through NASA's own equations for satellites. So you have to assume the Earth is centered and in the, in the fixed position, and then you use inertial forces as if they're real, but claim that they're fictitious. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. And there is a Newtonian, Einsteinian, kinematic and dynamic equivalence. All right. Uh, last two questions. What's it only in your dreams did, uh, no, no, no. Megalyn. I'm, no, I'm not going to finish that one, but thank you for your super chat. Uh, John says for a dollar 99, do you follow Q? No. Do they mean like QAnon, like down in America yeah. in there? Yeah. Yeah. Not my thing, bro. Like, oh, the government's saying sit on your hands and trust the government. <laughs> Look up Operation Trust. It's been done before in Russia. All right. Last one coming in, Balthazar. The math for predicting all celestial motions goes from being super simple in a heliocentric model to absurdly complex with a geocentric model. I'd love to see him even try to properly derive anything. Thoughts on that before your ending statement? That's the end of our super chats, everybody. So let's stop them from coming in. It's just another script. If you actually read the papers, you'll see that the math is simpler. But they won't actually read the papers because they're uncomfortable. But I explained earlier that they took Tycho Brahe, a geocentric model, and then they took all his data and tried to make it heliocentric. You got Copernicus. They had to add more epicycles to make it work, which means it was less elegant, it was less adaptable, and it was more complicated. In addition to that, all of the math is very simple because there's a dynamic equivalence if the Earth is in the center. So you said you'd like to see me do it. I just gave you the papers that literally do it. Relational Mechanics by Andreas Cease and Luca Popov wrote the Newtonian uh, Neo-Tychonian Analysis for Planetary Motion. Okay, it breaks all the math and physics down. It's very simple. It's more simple, more elegant, and more adaptable than the heliocentric model. But I bet you'll keep repeating that script because, frankly, that's all That's all you have. It's just to claim that it's simpler. <laughs> all right. Closing thoughts there, Woodson, on our discussion tonight. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, we weren't able to get into a lot of like the real like meat of it, like the real specifics. When I was talking to T-Jump, I wanted to get into the specifics of it, but let me break it down real quick. It's really simple. So uh, people back in the day, they thought that the earth were, was a plane. Then they thought, oh no, it must be a ball because the perfect shape's a sphere. That's the Greeks. Then they thought it was a stationary sphere for many years. And then they got to the point where they said, oh, actually the earth is tilted, wobbling, spinning, and revolving around the sun. And that's a sphere, right? And so then we fast forward to where we started making very big advancements in technology and telescopes and stuff. And we were like, okay, well, if the earth is this little tiny rock in this insignificant corner tucked away, then we should see things moving everywhere. I shouldn't care about the earth at all. We should see redshift, blue shift, left, right, up, down, everywhere, right? That was just the heliocentric models predictions. Edward Hubble saw, wait a minute, everything we see, no matter how far out we see, no matter how good the telescope gets, it all moves around the earth, everything including the distant galaxies, and they spin once a year and complete their circuits all moving around the Earth. 
So they had to update the heliocentric model to absorb the idea that all observations would look like we're in the center. They changed it. They moved the goalpost in the early early 20th century. And they said, oh, it's accelerating, expanding in all directions. Okay. And there's many different things. We've done cosmic microwave backgrounds that have shown that actually the Earth is in the center based on the anisotropic distribution centered on the Earth. But long story short, in a very simple way, all observations ever show that the Earth's in the center. The heliocentric model says that's just an illusion. So you have the burden of proof to claim that it's actually the opposite of what we see. Now, if we compare the two, seconds. the heliocentric model needs dark matter and dark energy to even potentially, possibly, theoretically exist. The geocentric model doesn't have those problems because it's just in the center. It doesn't need accelerative expansion. So therefore, the geocentric model is objectively significantly more viable than the heliocentric model. All right. Well, we're going to close it off there. And uh, I'm going to remind everybody that we have our tickets linked in the live description for DebateCon 4. What's it's going to be there? He's debating against Leo. It's going to be a great time. Uh, so you won't want to miss that. Uh, so if you're going to be in the area, get your tickets. Let us know in the live chat where you're at. We always like to know where people are hanging. Uh, you see that little... Uh, the little uh, thermostat on the side there of the regular video that we had up uh, before uh, we turned into just a regular Zoom call. Uh, that's a representative of our crowd fund, and that's also linked in our description where you can get access to all kinds of amazing perks uh, if you can't make it in person, but you also want to support the event. Uh, so I will let everybody know that we are going to be doing an open panel uh, after show. Uh, so if you want to come in there and let us know what you think of the discussion, uh, I'm going to put the link in the dis uh, the live description and uh, remind everybody to, you know, keep sifting the reasonable out from the unreasonable. And uh, thanks, Witsit, for being here. Big virtual round of applause for Witsit. And we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, much love. Cheers, buddy. All right, I'll try to jump on. I'll try to jump on the...
self aggression. Tyranny's mixed with self aggression. What am I to do but tear away when I'm boiling at the top? Try to find a way to fight the fire. Smart to rap from the minds of liars. Because the shots as you bow your heads and the match you never stops. The stars could be free, but this insanity bends you right by the knee. Running in circles now for something that can't be found. Not a rap as you hit the wall. The rain starts to fall. You can run away. Sing a tune that's true. I'll be seen beside you.
Did you think you would always be for free? Now sit back, watch it burn, burn, burn.